Wait a second. Going back to starting soon. Whoops. And we're live. Oh, wait a second. I'm not getting any audio from you guys. Okay. Let's try that. Can you guys hear my housemate talking to his girlfriend in the background? Just ever so slightly. No, it's okay. I'll just turn my sensitivity down. <laughs> I don't have a lot of hair to get out of, so sounds like a good plan. All right. We are good to go. All right. So, For reals this time? I think so. Okay. I think I, I, think I did it. Oh, he did it. It's about time. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Get a load of this so guy. Shots fired. All right, team. Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in this week to Three Clerics and a Baby. Uh, I am Turner, like always, your dungeon master. And uh, this week, as we're introducing ourselves, we're going to talk about our favorite works of fantasy fiction, uh, just like we're just like we're playing through now. So I would have to say um, mine is probably either Lord of the Rings: The Two Towers. Or till we have faces by C.S. Lewis. Both of those are pretty, pretty baller, pretty baller works of fiction, fantasy fiction. So there we go. Anyway, uh, who is our next candidate? I'm Fred. I play uh, Bray Blackwood, the Nature Cleric, and uh, I guess my favorite piece of fiction is. Does it have to be fantasy? Uh, we'll say no. Okay. If it's not fantasy, then it's. Uh, um, do androids dream of electric sheep? Ooh, solid choice. Really? I've literally never heard of that. Really? What? Yeah. Have you heard of Blade Runner? Trick. Yeah. Okay. It's like the Blade Runner book. Hmm. I haven't actually seen Blade Runner, so oh, there's oh, that. Boy. Wow. So sad. Rip. Uh, well, I'm Kylie. I play Soren Silverton, uh, and there's just too many to choose from. Uh, I mean, Game of Thrones is always a good, solid choice. Um, Dark Tower with Stephen King, that's a good choice. Uh, yeah, take your pick. Oh, and I'm uh, Jonathan. I play Oleander, the uh, death cleric slash rogue now. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to say Lord of the Rings, but... You can still say Lord of the Rings. It's great. I mean, I can still say Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Or Lord yeah. of the Rings, the porn parody. <laughs> also very good. Yeah. <laughs> Oleander is actually based off of Legolas, who is the true death cleric of Lord of the Rings. Yeah. You guys see how that guy slings arrows. You know how it is. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, uh, we are all level three now. Uh, real quick. Let's see, let's just talk about a recap first and then any downtime activities, Bray, I think you had one and if anyone else did that I'm forgetting about, we'll talk about it. But um, recap from last time. So you guys got a baby in session one and you guys have been carting that baby around looking for its mother. However, uh, the mother thing kind of went to the side as you guys were tasked to go to a zoo in Neverwinter and help find a potential cure for the Black Lake rot that is plaguing Neverwinter at the moment. You guys found, went down into the, the bottom of this zoo in Neverwinter, and after fighting through a bunch of the monsters that have been let loose in there for about 40 years, you found the corpses of the two wizards who are down there, 
or I'm sorry, no, they were alive, but they were sleeping. Yep. And uh, they they shared the information that they had about the, the plague and the, um, the potential cure. Anyway, so you guys have returned back to the watchtower of the Winter Shield Watch, and you are now spending the night before the next day where you'll do whatever you're going to do with the homies. Uh, Bray, what was your downtime activity? So um, in game, Bray realized that he was very clunky and uh, not very stealthy uh, while his uh, compatriots were just as, uh, I guess, hardy, but less clunky. So he asked the uh, guard if he can trade some of his uh, heavy armor in for some lighter armor. And they obliged and they provided. So I'm going to be out of heavy armor and into medium armor, and they let me change my uh, uh, battle axe for a warhammer as well. Nice. Yep. And uh, out of game, it's because I don't play D and D enough to know that heavy armor didn't roll in my uh, dex modifier, but it totally makes sense. So um, I can get just as high an AC without sacrificing, you know, mm. stealth good cool a little tip for the beginners out there um (laughs) i mean just a little bit of downtime i guess i spoke to a uh a guy about a thing about ordering it from water deep yeah cool wink wink wink, nudge nudge good stuff (laughs) a guy about a thing very cool yeah Yeah. Yeah. it's It's very cloak and dagger (laughs) no ollie's the one who took the rogue class come on i know um and then okay yeah and then ollie did you have anything that we talked about in the downtime i don't remember uh no no i don't think so cool okay so uh last part of the recap do any of you guys remember or who would like to tell me what the in, the key ingredient for creating a cure was dragon uh, dragon yeah. i don't know if we specified i believe it was just like just dragon yeah. stuff in general I don't so, yeah, think cure from it. dragon. That's all they told us. Was it dragon bone? Because I got a little bit of that. Um, no, it just no. yeah, cure from dragon. Something from a dragon. Yep. Also, Fred, did you say starbursts earlier? Yeah, starbursts, the pink ones. The okay, cure cool. Anything. <laughs> Can't wait to talk about that when our sponsors get a little little hour of our time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but pink starbursts only, obviously, not the orange ones. Yeah, we wouldn't stuff. sponsor them. We're not <laughs> no trash. Way. Yeah. <laughs> Featuring the new pink Starburst only uh, bag of Starburst. Yeah. And if you're a masochist, they do have the orange only. Yeah. It's time with Tim asks, is it dragon sperm? Is, it, is that the secret? Only time will tell. The players yeah. will discover one day. Wait a second. It's not, it wasn't love all along, was it? Because if it's love all along, then I'm out. <laughs> The, the, the cure was the friendships we made along the way, which is uh, exactly what cures COVID nineteen, ironically. So, <laughs> I don't think any of us are going to be cured for a long Why time. Why are they actually. keeping us indoors if the cure is to make friendships? <laughs> What'd you say? Why are they keeping us indoors if the cure is to make friendships? It had to be with family members. Oh, I family see. members only. You know, no. Yeah. Is that like farmers only? <laughs> yes. But for <laughs> Alabama. <laughs> Family only is my favorite dating website. <laughs> this is the only time where there is actually a hot single in your area. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. So you guys, um, you guys wake up in the morning, and uh, it's it is it is really really quiet in the tower. Uh, you wake up, and dawn is just now sending its its bar of light through the window that falls onto the floor. And uh, you wake up to silence, and that silence is there because the baby is not there anymore. What in the fuck? Hey, baby. <laughs> hey, Oleander, what'd you do with that baby? Yeah, wasn't it strapped to your chest? Well, I don't sleep with the with the baby strapped to my chest, so. Hey, yeah, you, you don't, don't sleep, wanna, though, I thought. That would be a bad idea. You roll over. Yeah, I mean, it's a solid Swish. four or something. Um. <laughs> Can I roll a investigation? <laughs> Baby check. 
Yeah, yeah. What are you What are you investigating? I'm baby. To determine if there's a baby, baby around. Okay, uh, go for it. I'm just gonna listen very closely and see if I can hear a baby. Okay. I got go a five. Okay, <laughs> your baby senses are tingling. Uh, you don't hear a baby, but you do hear like the the clanging and scraping of someone dragging around furniture downstairs in the watchtower and like some loud voices and then silence. All right, let's head off to that uh, that noise. You, do we recognize the voices? You don't. These voices seem strange. They're not voices you've ever heard before or recognize. Uh, as you 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 leave the watch your your room in the watchtower and head downstairs, and when you get there, uh, you see just a totally empty room in the watchtower, and the hearth is dead, and it's just cold gray ash in the in the fireplace. Uh, the door leading outside is wide open. Hmm. I feel like we're gonna be I, I feel like we're gonna be in trouble for losing this baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just walked out. Come on, guys. <laughs> yeah, better stuff to do. Does he have like a? Is he moonlighting? Can I roll to see yeah. if he's moonlighting? He's a baby PI. He just sits and like smokes in alleyways and waits for people to come by. <laughs> um, uh, didn't you get a, a note? Or somebody got a note saying to yeah. give it back to me. You, yes, a bunch of uh, the more radical Nashers in the Black Lake. There was a murder scene with them. Their bodies were burned and stabbed. And uh, there was a note that said, give back the baby. Was it like different size letters from like newspaper clippings? And No, unfortunately, oh, okay. it's just handwriting. Yeah, but yeah, fantasy how serious handwriting. Can they, yeah, how seriously can they be? I mean, <laughs> yeah. can't do a proper kidnapping now. <clears throat> Right, and there's only one magazine that runs in, in uh, right? Neverwinter anyway. Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'm going to yell, has anyone seen my baby? <laughs> okay, and you hear the baby, 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 as there's this loud clanging echo that goes up into the rafters and even outside. Uh, you hear the, the moan of wind as it, it uh, goes by out in the city of Neverwinter. And you realize now that uh, it's actually, it's much darker outside than you thought it would be. It, it seems like it's almost evening, though it was just morning when you were up in your tower. Uh, perception check? <laughs> <laughs> Fair response. <laughs> uh, 19. Okay. Um, okay, 19. What are you trying to perceive? I'm trying to perceive if there's like, if it's like artificially darkened or why it's all of a sudden dark maybe that's a nature check or an arcana check um yeah you're just like paying attention and you feel just like so surreal like you know that where you know that you're in the watchtower but you're also like not in the watchtower you have you just feel this odd sense of otherness about you where you are right now oh okay Guys, I think I'm dreaming. Somebody, somebody <laughs> slap me. I uh, walk over. Uh, <laughs> that hurts. Yeah, no, that's that's uh, about one point. That's about point two of damage there for you. Oh, oh no. Two points uh, of damage. One, uh, point two, oh. zero point two points of damage. Yeah. Uh, okay, perfect. Uh, I'll, I'll round that down. Okay, good. Look out the window. Is it still <laughs> city? Is it still what? Like the city, we're still in the city? Yeah, you look out the window and you see it's the city of Neverwinter, but it's either a long time ago or sometime far in the future because it looks totally empty, abandoned, deserted. And uh, there are dark gray clouds gathering in the west, rolling across the ocean to meet you. And the um, many of the towers and buildings of the city are blown out and destroyed. All right, what in the fuck is up? Let's go check out, we gotta find this baby. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, what? Well, I'll head downstairs. Um, I'll kind of like quietly, you know, quiet as quiet as I can. Head downstairs. Okay. I thought you guys were already downstairs. Did I? Oh, did I do that wrong? yeah, yeah. yeah. We were. Okay. And I was yelling. So. <laughs> right, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Never mind. Then. Well, um, I'll check out what's going on with the the furniture dragging. Okay, so yeah, it, you turn to check and see what's going on because you remember the furniture dragging and you look and, and all of a sudden you realize that the table, this big like round table that was in the center of the room is gone. Uh, either that it was never there when you came down or that it suddenly disappeared when you started to think about it. You're not exactly sure why. Schrodinger's table. 
Hmm. Hmm. There's a sudden there's a sudden rumble of thunder outside, and there's like a, a flash where it begins raining and then stops raining almost immediately. I'm gonna rush outside. Okay. Um, yeah. So outside is like it's the it's a a late afternoon. There's a wind that rolls in with a a cold like fall chill. And you see there's just a long street that goes out down looking, you're, you're looking over the rest of the city from the Protector's Enclave. Um, let's get it going. Let's get it started. Yeah. All right. Um, and the, you see the city of Neverwinter before you, this long street that goes down into the rest of the city. And in the center of the street, there is a, a pool totally still of glimmering, uh, glimmering water. And you hear in the wisp, just a whisper, uh, from this clear pool. Ray. Hmm? <laughs> I'm going to say, what? <laughs> Ray, come closer. Say that again? Come closer. <laughs> hey, this laughing water is talking to me. I, I got somewhere to go. I tell them. I, I'm going to go see what this water is trying to tell me. So okay. I, go, I go to the water and I look in. You, you peer into the pool and you trigger the cutscene that I wrote out on four pages of notebook paper. Oh. <clears throat> it's okay though, it's not that boring, I promise. Here we go. Okay, you, you, so you peer into the pool and as you do, you see yourself and you begin to hear the sound of a roaring waterfall. And now the pool before you begins expanding until its glassy surface has spread and covered the whole city. Though the roar of the waterfall is loud and all of you can hear this and see this, uh, it does not consume you. Rather, it envelops you with a shroud of tranquility. You start to realize that the waterfall is actually the sound of a voice. It's speaking to you a long utterance, one that's already been going on much before you began to understand it. You wonder if this voice has always been speaking in nature around you, though you've never had the ears to hear it. You can now make out the words. A shadow has fallen across Faerun, Bray. It is the will of the gods that you will stand in its path with these companions and turn the chaos that it wreaks back to peace. Though it speaks of justice, it does not have the wisdom to create anything but violence. I have one word of aid for you. Meet the dragon's fury with peace, unless you must do otherwise. The voice of the waterfall continues to speak, but you know its words no longer. It trails off and the voice becomes a roar, the roar a trickle, and the trickle silence and the pool at your feet uh, and, and suddenly all of you find yourself standing at this pool but the pool is no longer a pool but it's a figure sitting shrouded in a cloak of darkness he stands and suddenly the air is still and cold a sound like the wind out of a far country rushes all around you and the figure speaks with an echoing lament i am justice the final destination for many a beginning for others time leads all to me and i bow the knee to none but a few Oleander, Oleander Galanadel, do you know me? Do I? Is that is that a <laughs> is that some sort of a check? <laughs> Oleander, you know me. You know my voice. I do. It's it, it is, Kalambor, Kelem, right? Yeah. It's, it is. It Papa? is I, Kalambor. <laughs> Papa. <laughs> Papa. <laughs> You are about to face an evil that will test you beyond what many others could even fathom. Your journey has brought you to a place from your past. You must conquer the one who defies me and send him to his final justice, or he will be handed over to all the evil of his own making. I have one word of aid for you. There will be one name you do not recognize. She hides within the key to his undoing. The figure before you is gone, the rushing wind still, and the air no longer cloying and choking. But the robes of that dark figure have fallen to the ground and you realize they become the tattered garb of a peasant. A man wears this tattered garb, a broken and bloody man. He looks as if he was recently beaten and whipped and his blood sticks to the, uh, and blood sticks his black hair to his head. He rises feebly, but at his full height, you see the nobility of a king about him. His eyes gleam as he sets his gaze upon you, Soren, and he smiles. Peace to you, he says. Peace to you, my liege. You have suffered much, and you will suffer much more on the path, follow me. But know that your suffering ends with joy and comfort. There is a deep evil that has risen in Faerun. You and your companions are destined to strive for its destruction. 
but there is rest in the morning. I have one word of aid to you. Vengeance comes for each of you. Fear the elf lord. The city grows dark and there's no God near you anymore. Instead of divine presence, you feel the absence of good and there's something evil that crawls up your skin. A figure covered in long silver robe floats up the alley of the, or floats up the road of the city towards you uh, from the southeast and pointing at Oleander, the figure hisses, I have not forgotten. Roll initiative. What? Oh. Oh. What? 19? Ooh. Five. Okay. <laughs> the Do solid recognize, 11. Do I recognize this guy? You you have this this strange sense that he's familiar, like deeply familiar to you, but you, you can't place who this is. You know? Yeah, I can't find familiar. <laughs> uh, Bray, can you end the stream for me? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to turn off this light and see what it does for okay. my face. How's that hit you? Yeah. Ooh, that's not bad. Focus. Thanks, Tim. I'm ready. Yep. Hello. Focus. Hello. There it is. Uh, there we are. There we go. Who had our nineteen? That was uh, Ollie. Me. Yeah, of course. Okay. Wow, you never go first in initiative. What's that about? What? It's not it's like I have an advantage or nothing. No. You made a big mistake here, Buckaroo. Stigma bake. All right, Ollie, it's your turn. Okay, uh, so describe your boy again. Oh, yes. So the, he wears these long silver robes. And they're, they, um, they, yeah, they're decorated with like this fine green decoration lines that run up and down it. And they're flowing and they cover his hands over his face like the hood falls down to his chest. And then they just float off as he levitates and floats off the ground towards you. The robes are like dragging along the flagstone pavement. He's about twenty feet away. Okay, like like a whole, you know, Thanos vibes. I don't even know who you are. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, this, I guess this boy looks real scary. You know what? Fuck it. We're gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, just charge right at him. Okay. All right. We're doing it. Go for it. And um, let's go ahead. We we'll go with uh, just a normal uh, attack with my rapier. Okay. Get you not. That's a nat twenty. Oh baby! All right, roll that crit damage. Oh. What, a, what a start. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, boy. That's a three and a four. Uh, <laughs> seven plus another four, so uh, 11 damage. Nice. Did you get sneak attack on that too? Well, nobody else is near him, y'all. Uh, wait, I think you get sneak attack when you move before him. If like if he hasn't acted yet in this initiative, you get sneak attack. Is that correct? Let's, say, let's say yes. Sure. Sorry if I'm wrong, then you can... Hey, guess what? That's a one. <laughs> Perfect. It mattered oh, a lot. Image. 12, okay. Wait, 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 wait. Double, double sneak attack. Because it... Oh! Snake eyes. That's another <laughs> one. Amazing. Love it. Oh, 13 damage. You got him. Okay. Yep. So, yeah, what are you attacking with again? My, uh, my plus one rapier. Okay. Oh. oh, yes, that's right. Uh, so you stab the rapier through his cloak and you feel it slide through flesh, but it just, it gives way and you see this creature in front of you, it like a cold breath descends from under the robe and it, it looks, um, yeah, it looks like it's barely phased by this attack. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, so you, you do this and as you do this, he, he turns slightly to you and he just says a word utters one word and you have no memory of it afterwards. You, you can't even comprehend it. Um, how many hit points do you have? None of your business. <laughs> oh. Uh, 21. Okay, and as you hear this word, uh, you you just, you die immediately. Your your body falls to the ground. And you're, what? Uh, able to, yeah, your, your body falls to the ground just 
Was it Avada Kedavra? No, that's two <laughs> words. Come on. Oh. <laughs> Unless he hyphenated it. <laughs> okay, let me check how many actions he gets. Mm-hmm. What the fuck? <laughs> what just <laughs> happened? Okay, um, so he... He raises his hand after he says this word, and this like of energy shoots out from him. Uh, Soren and Bray make a saving throw for me. Love those. What kind uh, of my saving throw. Uh, yep. What uh, <laughs> kind of saving throw would this be? Uh, oh, sorry. Yep, this is a con save. Oh, okay. Nineteen. Uh, twenty-two. Okay, nice. So let's see. So you guys both take half damage. Well done. Uh, Boy. That is going to be 10 damage. Ugh. And um, you, Ouch. yeah, he, like, um, you you feel this, this energy roll over you, and uh, you feel suddenly, like, haggard and older, and you, you like, look at your hair, and, and some of it has turned gray. There are now, like, graying streaks in your hair, even in your beard hair. Sorry, Bray. <clears throat> okay, and then uh, he gets one more action. Let's see. So he's going to look Bray at you, and as he turns his cloaked head at you, you know you can't see his eyes or even what would be under the cloak, but you know that he's directing his attention at you. Uh, Please make a wisdom saving throw for me. Six. Nice. Okay. (laughs) Okay, so uh, you are just terrified by the, the attention of this creature, and you are now frightened for one minute. Okay, and then that brings us to Soren. All right, I'm going to run over to Oleander okay. uh, and administer a use of my health kit. Nice. Is he dead, dead, or is he, like, dead? Not anymore. Even post, is this, like, this is post-death saves death. He is like, dead. Po- like, like, dead, like, dead? Like, yes, three like, fails dead. Oh. Like, I'm with my boy. My boy <laughs> is killing for <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> well... At side of that, I guess I will use the kit on myself. Okay. <laughs> Back up the full health. Yeehaw. Uh, and then as my bonus action, I'm going to cast Sanctuary on Bray. Nice. And what does Sanctuary do again? Uh, creature within range uh, has... Until the spell ends, any creature who targets the warded creature with an attack or harmful spell must first make a wisdom saving throw. On a fail, he has to choose a new target or lose the attack or spell. Cool. Okay. That sounds great. Alrighty. And um, then, Bray, it would be you. Um, So I'm going to stow my battle axe on my back and uh, stand there. Okay. uh, Take it like a man. That's it. All right. Um, back to the top, he turns to you and says, um, I will come for you eventually. And he points his finger at you, um, Bray. So he's going to make, what is your save again, Kylie or Soren? Uh, it's not great. It's like a, uh, you know, 14. Okay, and that's wisdom? Yeah. Okay. Or, uh, yeah. Okay. Yep. So uh, he he points his finger, and you feel like the the force of the sanctuary around you, Bray, it like crumbles underneath this spell, and you take um, hold on two times seven fourteen plus fourteen plus thirty forty four damage. <laughs> One more time, forty four. That's Brit. deceased, boys. <laughs> okay, so you fall to the ground unconscious, uh, and then finally, no, that's uh, okay, deceased. So... That's dead. Boy. Oh, you, how much HP do you have? Thirty-two, and he hit me for. So you're not dead, dead. You're just like. But he took regular I, dead. I've took taken twenty, right? I've taken like eleven the last round. Yeah. So that put me like at twenty something, and he just hit me for like forty something. So. So to outright kill you, every attack has to kill it, like take out your entire health worth. So even if he dropped him to zero and had to like attack him again, he'd have to do his full health to kill him outright. Yeah, like underneath. Oh. Yeah. Negative. I thought yeah. it was half so the it, health. So it resets. It's not, it doesn't like stack. It like resets after. I thought it was half the health. Um, no, you have below. to do the entire health. So if your HP is, what you said, 30? 30, 32. 30? 
32. He has to do, like, kill you, and then do an additional 32 to outright kill you. Oh, hmm. I thought it was 16. I could have sworn it was 16. Or, or, or not 17, but or half. No, no, no. We'd all be dead. Really. <laughs> really. Oh. Like... oh, easy? Yeah? Yeah. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Like what? Like one word easy or <laughs> something like <Or> similar? <laughs> yeah, yeah. like two words maybe for you. Um, so, at the, do you remember Bray at the end of uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade when like the guy takes the cup and it's the wrong cup? Oh, why did you take the wrong cup, Bray? Yeah, come on, Bray. So you drank from that cup. Uh, you you just crumple up and begin to rot on the spot and then fall to the ground, a, a set of bones and, and uh, wisps of skeletal hair. Um, okay, and then he, he floats forward and places his hand on your head, Soren. Um, <laughs> let's see. Does a 28 hit? It does indeed. Okay, so you take 10 points of damage, um, and Frostbite begins like spreading down the top of your head. My and uh, hit me with one of those constitution saving throws. Yeah. That was a nat 20, so that's a 22. Okay, nice. So you are not paralyzed, although you feel like this this cold threatening to take your muscles. Uh, as this is happening, suddenly, like, as if the world in front of you was a painting and part of it was set on fire, this, like, f burst of flame appears in the corner of your vision and begins to, like, eat away at the sky and the buildings and then the, the robes of this creature in front of you. And all of a sudden, you guys wake up in your room in the tower and the baby is crying. Uh, and has just let forth like another sneeze of fire that's caught the edge of the bed on fire. Uh, we're all awake? Yep. I'm alive. Uh, I'm going to say, uh, guys, I just had the coolest dream. <laughs> <laughs> I had a dream. Uh, cool is not a word I would use. I talked to God. <laughs> And I mean, I God. also, I died. Not my Jesus. I died and <laughs> you died, Oli. Um, Soren, you weren't doing very much of anything. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he was... had his healer kid out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, guys, I think that dream was an omen. Uh, I think you're correct in that. What do you mean? Uh, I'm assuming we all shared the same dream. What do you mean? Did you also have a dream? Yeah, I did. You were there. You were there. Yeah, mine kind of stopped when I died. <laughs> Fair. Um, so, there, I'll, I can send you guys the full text, but one of the, the important thing is each of you got one word of aid. From from your god, you're also gonna have to put out this bed because the fire is spreading. But I'll just oh. give them to you now, so you can you can. So we're having down. this conversation while the fire's <laughs> yeah, when the baby's right. crying and the bed's on fire. It's quite warm in the room. <laughs> right. I'll do the uh, uh, the old uh, sparkly eyes and uh, what what was the dance? Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, persuade with advantage, Oleander. Oh, Matt. Well, persuade. Um, eleven. Um. Okay. So yeah, the baby is still crying. It's it's comforted a little, but it's still like um. It's it was startled by the fire on the bed, and so you're just gonna come on, baby. You did the fire. I know. Yeah. I'm gonna Hold throw out. uh blank to somebody. <laughs> I'm gonna throw Soren's blankets on the fire. Wow. Oh. <laughs> hey, listen, them? remember, you guys are all sharing one big bed, okay? Oh, yeah, right. it's like our blankets. It's everyone's blankets. Yeah. <laughs> I think I sleep a uh, dog, so. Okay, I'm gonna throw our collective blanket on the fire. Okay. Yeah. Um, roll me just a blanket roll blanket. me a simple uh, dexterity check. 18. Nice. Okay, so you like lay it over the fire and <laughs> at all the spots where it's coming up and soon the fire's just choked out and dead. And there's smoke that's billowing at the top of the room and just kind of floating up against the ceiling rafters and now there are the, the charred chunks of coal on the side of the uh, side of the bed frame are still embers. Mm. Still glowing embers. 
I'm uh, going to pull out um, uh, m uh, some of my rations, like a cracker or something, okay. and uh, offer it to the baby. Okay. Um, cool. So the baby takes it, but the baby is still crying. Roll a perception check for me. 17. Nice. So as you take the baby from Ollie, you feel a lot of squish on its butt. Um, that's uh, pretty natural. I'd say that's not my department. Uh, you know, uh, Ollie, I'm going to have to give you this book. It's called Everybody Poops. And <laughs> it talks about how you have, to, like, everybody poops, right? You know this baby poops, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's, so it's like... That's a natural thing. Okay. Uh, not my uh, expertise. I got this, boys. Uh, not exactly my modus operandi. Yeah. Catch uh, my drift. Good I'm use good. of Latin. Very nice. <laughs> uh, Very slick. I have. Uh, What's Latin? You're right. <laughs> I'm gonna take its diaper off and clean them up. Okay. Nice. No. No need to roll for that. You. Uh, this baby's consent. <laughs> no. <laughs> Parenting is a new twist in 2020. <clears throat> so you you change the baby and uh, the baby, yeah, the baby is still it's it's crying but calming down now. So its last little like wails, uh, but it's it's been satiated for the moment. If we could use such language. Um, okay, what what else do you guys want to do? You check your sundials and it's probably about four ish in the morning. Okay, so the, I think the only thing this baby's eaten in the last 24 hours was that cracker you just gave it. Mm, yeah, we should probably make it some food, huh? You got that goat? Oh, uh, yeah, I have mm -hmm. that pocket goat of mine. What are you talking about? <laughs> that goat stuff. Uh... Oh, the goat milk. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah sure. Are we uh, sure that it eats, given that it doesn't age, so it doesn't need nourishment? Uh, uh, well, like the baby, the baby gets hungry. Okay, let me tell you something, sir. But like, they still need to eat to be immortal. I know you guys aren't really like into nature; it's not really your thing. That's cool. But if it poops, it eats. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna make it some food. That is some ancient wisdom from the nature clerics' domain. Mm-hmm. Um, I roll can I... Yeah, if you want, go ahead. Uh, can I go down to the kitchens and see if, if it there's poops any... it eats? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Can I go down to the kitchens and see if there's any foods that I can find for it? Sure. Roll an easy investigation check. Mm -hmm. Just eat at that flower. I'm sure that'll go well. Mm -hmm. Fire baby. Jack Jack. Hard vibes. It's like an unmade cake, if you think about it. <laughs> it's like that it's always sunny episode where they have to eat like, the ingredients of a cake to yeah. get out of the cage <laughs> um, <laughs> any uh, protein uh, 13 okay nice so you do the like the classic teenager sneaking downstairs to like open the fridge loudly and get cheese sticks out kind of move and you find uh you find a, a small like the a, a little bit of a loaf of bread and a, a few bites of cheese left over from the night's meal before and you're able to bring it upstairs and um feed small bits, small soft bits of the bread and cheese to the baby. See you baby bird in this baby? I'm That's gonna, up to Bray. Yeah, no, I'm not going to baby bird it. Uh, I am going to roll to see if I can invent the sandwich by putting <laughs> okay. the cheese in between two pieces of bread. Go ahead and roll me a wisdom check for that one. Six. Nice. You uh, You forgot that the sandwich is already invented, and so you're trying to think of like something really cool but you're just like, it's not coming to you and you're sure that this great invention is like on the tip of your tongue, but alas, it's lost. Does the baby like my offering of bread and cheese? The baby does like your offering of bread and cheese and it is now eating with its still wet eyes uh, as you guys you guys rock it and, and, uh, and comfort it in your room. So it has stopped crying. Can I find something to make a diaper out of? Oh yeah, you have plenty of diapers still. Oh, that's right. Yep. Okay. Cool. Okay, so baby is comforted. Diapers are are put on, and uh, what do you guys want to do now? It's it's early, early in the morning. Uh, 
we uh, probably should go check out that uh, crime scene <laughs> sooner rather than later. But it's early. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of watching Bray clean up this baby's ass. So we should, you know, find uh, this thing's mother. There is yeah. a light light wrap at the door uh, where you guys are at. Here we go. A light wrap? Like Biggie Smalls? Ooh, three Pac. Pac. <laughs> My boy. <laughs> the wrap comes again. <laughs> and I lay down a fresh beat. I don't understand what that song is. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, I go open the door. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. That joke is now old. Um, yeah. So the, you see a a sleepy Whitmore rubbing uh, rubbing sleep out of his eyes. He has on a a nightcap and um, like a I know set of pants, but no shirt. And you see his like scarred chest. He's a big muscle boy. Um, Whitmore. One more peers in at you and at the baby and all of you up and just decided you have a, had to have an early morning, did you? Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, babies up at the crack of dawn. Oh, boy. Boy, do I. Yep, that's right. Uh, anyway, um, if you guys are up for the morning, I suppose I could go put on some coffee. And, um, and well, sure. we've got a long day ahead of you. You've already found this cure for us, which we appreciate a ton. Uh, by the way, I never paid you for that. Well, I don't pay you, but uh, Mural, he never paid you for it. You gave me the money to hand to you, though, if you want. Uh, he also told me to pass along what you'd be doing for the, the next few days or however long it takes you. Uh, we really need to find this baby's mom. In fact, it's probably, well, it's the most important thing you guys, as the baby's caretakers at this point, could be doing. So uh, we're going to set you, set you loose. And I, I thought I heard some talk of it behind the door to go and look for this baby's mom. Uh, like I heard you guys talking about, it may be best. The only lead that we have, besides the witness you already questioned, is uh, the, the scene of the crime. How long were you standing outside that door? <laughs> oh, like 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite a while. You okay. sat out that 30 seconds. I was tired. I wanted to get ready before <laughs> I came in here. That's five rounds. The, I, I understood that on a very deep level that I can't quite comprehend. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's fucking creepy. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the money. yeah. We'll just take the money and do the rest of our fucking job, I guess. Uh, um, thanks for the gear, by the way. I appreciate it. Oh, of course. Whitmore nods to you. It'll look good on you, by the way. He says, and he eyes it in the corner. Uh, he pulls forth from his pants pocket three bags of gold, two hundred each in in these. Uh, he says, and he hands a bag of gold to each of you. Uh, it was 150 for what was it? Uh, 100 gold for for your work that you did helping find the cure, and uh, there'll be much more thanks from Lord Neverember than just that gold. Uh, also, we we went down there and we raided the last of the zoo's treasury, and were able to scavenge what we could of those dragon bones and whatever creatures were left down there. And uh, we thought that you should be paid a, a pretty hefty sum for that as well. So that's the extra hundred. So 200 gold on the watch. You earned it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't get eaten by a chest, so. What'd you say? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I uh, I wouldn't know much about that, but we did see that uh, mimic body. Is that what you were talking about? Yeah, I mean, the thing that looked like a chest and sat like a chest, but wasn't a chest and almost ate me. Yeah. You know that? the old saying? If it looks like a chest and if it walks like a chest... It's a mimic. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I'm uh, I'm gonna head downstairs and uh, have me some of that that coffee. If you all want a cup, feel free to grab one on the way out. And uh, Whitmore turns and he descends the stairs. Also, while I'm handing out um, handing out goodies, Soren, give yourself an inspiration point for using your money uh, in character on the poor. Oh. Yeah. Throughout the last couple sessions. Okay, so you guys uh, are are equipping up right now. It's still about four, early four in the morning. Uh, is there anything specific you guys want to do as you're putting on your armor, gathering your weapons, etc.? Yeah, I want to try to find uh, some bags of flour. 
Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> roll an investigate check for me. Oh boy. I'm good at those. So I have a feeling we should just invest in a bakery. <laughs> <laughs> They'll always be out of flour. <laughs> Eight, it's like money laundering exists, but this is like the weird alternate form of money laundering. <laughs> like an arsonist sets up a bakery just so we can get flour out of it. <laughs> Unsuspicious flour purchases. Um, 18? 18. Okay, great. So let me roll for you. You that was an unfortunate roll here. I'll I'll sweeten the pot a little bit with this D four. Okay, there we go. You're um you are rummaging around through the kitchen, and after looking high and low in all of the cabinets, you find five bags of flour uh, that you stow in your bag. And, and Whitmore comes in and he looks kind of weirdly at you, and, and then goes back out to making coffee. Anything else you guys want to do? I'm gonna swap my scale mail for studded leather. Okay, cool. Um, I, yeah, um, this thing, this shit fucking jingles too much. And, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm trying to be a little more of a sneaky boy. Sneaky snack. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm going to infuse two items. Okay, nice. Uh, like oh, either. artificer, so cool. Yeah, so I'm going to give myself a plus one armor and a repeating shot on my light class crossbow. That's awesome. Do you, how many uh, infusions do you get at level one? Uh, I get four infusions, but two items That's at level two. Hmm. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. Alrighty, team. So now it is about five in the morning, uh, or maybe just before five in the morning. You see the the early orange glow of sunrise coming up over the mountains to the west. Is that sunrise? Yeah. No. To the east. From the east. Excuse me. And. Um, yeah, there's now an orange glow outside as day begins to break. You guys are ready to head out. Anything, any last things you'd want to do before leaving the watchtower? Hmm. They don't have a store here, do they? No, they don't, unfortunately. What are you looking to buy? Nothing. I'm just, you know, thought I'd look around. Yeah, they don't have any any sort of store here, but there's plenty of stuff out in the city that you'd be able to visit even on your on your way to the crime scene. Hmm. Hey, so uh, who's who's taking this baby today? Uh, um, hmm, let's see. I, I had could him do the that. First time. Yeah. Yeah. I shall, uh, oh take yeah, you haven't taken baby yet, so. Nope. Can I handle? Uh, it? Yeah, what? I'm not gonna strap it to my chest though. I'm gonna it's more like wear it like a backpack. See, so its head pops over the top of the, my shoulder. It's cute. Yeah. Hmm. So but now like, you've got like this mounted flame gun. It's just like a Doom <laughs> Eternal kind of thing. Yeah, I think Predator, like me. <laughs> <laughs> you better just like keep pulling your head to the side now. Yeah. You will lose some ear hair. That's okay. Hmm. All like muscular Austrian actors slash governors in the street are incredibly uncomfortable around your Predator gun. <laughs> <laughs> they never <don't> like it. <laughs> Okay, so you guys, um, you guys go to the scene of the crime, and here is a, a street of never winter before you. The spot in the city that you're at, this is a bit steampunky, but the spot in the city that you're at is really, this is a really nice area. Again, you guys uh, recognize this place from the descriptions. You've heard of it from Mithrid, the witness, and from Whitmore as well. The, the area you're at is a cross street, and there's uh, the world is just kind of waking up right now. It's a little after five. It took you guys roughly half an hour to get here in your walk. And uh, Fred, would you play the city ambiance? My good, my good All right. Okay, excellent. So you guys, the city is beginning to wake up around you. Um, you're 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 at the center of a cross street. So there's a north, south, east, west. To the west, it goes on to a little bit of a garden area that's fenced off with some iron fencing. To the north, uh, to the northwest and east, just some regular, um, yeah, just just regular streets. To the east, it'll go back to like the graveyard and a market area. To the north, to like the fullest area of the Never Ember Castle and the nicest places of the noble nobles. To like the northwest, and then uh, back to the south, it, uh, this road that gradually leads to the wall. Go to like the nearest 
domicile and okay. uh, the door. Cool. So to the northwest, there is like a nice apartment building. You knock on the bottom door and um, you see a, a man like poke his head out from one of the upper windows and look down at you. He's an elven man with a long nose and a purple nightcap that droops its little furry thing down as he looks up over you. <clears throat> and uh, he says, what business do you have here? Um, and I, in Elvish, you know, give him a nice like hail and well met kind of greeting. Ah, uh, nice. Okay, the truly well wind deal. We'll yeah, say. and um, uh, hey, just had a, we're we're with, we're with the watch. I just had a couple uh, questions. Um, a couple nights ago, we had a we had a little incident, and uh, this here baby um, separated from its mother. I was wondering if you maybe heard anything and could tell us anything about uh, what happened. Roll an insight check for me. That's a, that's a good roll. Um, 12. Nice. Okay. That's a moderate <laughs> roll. Yeah. <laughs> you can see that his ears perk up at the sound of like woman baby stolen, but he tries to like shake it off and not let any other, uh, not let any indication come on his face that he, he know, did something about this or that he, he was interested in this. Um, he's looking down over you and saying, watch, hmm, and he drums his fingers on the windowsill. Very, very curious, the watch here. Hmm. That's a juicy bit of gossip, he says to himself. Uh, I get a small uh, bag of coins and I start kind of, you know, throwing them up in the air and catching it again. Hmm. Okay, uh, nice. Ollie, make a persuade roll with advantage. Hey. Whoa. Uh, so Nat 10, want to <laughs> guess what uh, the roll is? Uh, eight, yeah, it's a nine. Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah, I that five. Rip. Okay, so yes, you, um, you, you say this up to him, and as Fred is jangling the bag of coins, and he looks down and says, Who's Fred? Um, oh, as Bray. Cardinal rule, Cardinal sin. His way is uh, <laughs> holding this bag of coins. He says, well, I won't invite, uh, I, I'm sorry, I can't invite you up right now, but uh, I suppose I could talk about it here. And he, he leans his arms on the windowsill like this. Um, you said a, a couple nights ago, a, a woman and her baby separated. Well, I did hear, I did see something about that. Yes, I was, uh, I was looking out the window and I happened to see a scuffle in the street, but um, I didn't quite catch too many details of what happened though. But um, he says, I did see, well, I did see this woman approach at least. I didn't didn't think it was a much, much interest. I, I wouldn't have seen the scuffle if I hadn't heard it outside and come rushing back to the windowsill. But I did see her approach on a carriage from the east. So you just watched this happen? You didn't You didn't do anything about it? Well, I wasn't exactly sure of what was going down out there. I, uh, I I simply looked, and there was a there was this crying baby, and there was a a woman lying there. And soon the guard came up, and I figured it's not it's not my business. He says, uh, "I'm going to insight check him." Okay, go ahead. Boy, is this uncomfortable for my shoulder. Seventeen. Okay, <clears throat> seventeen. Yeah. So he he is he is truthing, truthing. Okay. Yep. So. So let me let me just get a couple things straight. You saw a woman get attacked and uh, a baby crying, and then no more baby, and just the woman. Uh, yes, yes, just just the woman. That's right. Okay, yeah, cool, bud. Um, hey, Soren, don't you usually hand out tickets for stuff like this? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, just like pins it to the door. <laughs> yep. That's probably a good one. Um, yeah, I'm not going to fight that one at all. <laughs> I suppose I suppose that's that's good. I deserve it. I should have done something. Yeah. Well, listen. Do you do you have any more questions for me? Guess not, bud. Uh, where uh, you said, where did you say this lady came from? The northeast. She came from the north, northeast, yes, on a carriage. In fact, he says, and he points out the window towards a carriage that is just now pulling up. It looked very similar, if not uh, perhaps even the same as that one. 
He goes back to normal. Is there anything else I can help you with, gentlemen? No, and I turn around. Hey, hey. <laughs> Would you know this lady again if you saw her? Right. Oh, Sar? No, I bar- I didn't barely saw her. There were just shapes in the night to me. Sar, I barely even know her. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else that you can tell us? Is there well, I didn't know this was a whole us? crime investigation, he says. Well, but what you, what do you, uh, you, what, you witnessed this crime. Hey, stay, hey, stop. Stop that carry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, 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 no. That was all. Th- thank you. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, I've uh, I've got to get back inside to my now. So uh, I slap be... the, the horse on the ass. <laughs> the carriage or what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So he goes back in, and you hear you you don't hear his window shut, but you look and you can see like the like here's the window, and you see like the point of his nose sticking around of it, and he's like watching out. As you guys do the rest of the proceedings, I show him the bag of gold that he forgot to ask for, and I jingle it a little bit and I put it, I stow it. Ah, oh, nice. and I cast thaumaturgy on the window. <laughs> falls out, and then uh, and then it falls right back onto him. <laughs> yeah, so the window it. like slams shut on his nose, and you hear this like ah oh, pain, and he pulls back, and the window closes all the way. Try to get that checked out. <laughs> you heard muffled yelling from inside of the apartment. <laughs> uh, okay, so what are you guys doing now? Um, Checking out this carriage? Yeah, stop at that carriage. Okay, so you guys turn back to the carriage. It is this, like, uh, you've seen these throughout the city of Neverwinter as you've been traveling. These carriages just kind of going up and down the street. This one has two black horses in the front, and um, there is a, a man with a top hat pulled down low over his eyes, sitting in the seat of the carriage. And he's just now letting a gnome woman down out of the carriage. And uh, she, she hands him a couple coins, pockets them, and she disappears. Hey, hey, pal, uh, you, uh, you offering rides? Offering rides, he says, and, and pulls the top hat back up onto his head. Oh, I'm offering rides. And he looks at uh, Soren's badge. You're from the watch, aren't you? What that business do you have here? And where do you need to be going? Just a couple... Uh, uh, we'll ask the questions here. Oh. Hmm. Hey, you guys keep them distracted. I'm going gonna, uh, uh, gonna to say, oh, those are some mighty fine horses you have. I'm just going to take a look at them here. And what I'm do you gonna... mean, you guys keep them distracted? What was no, that? I, 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 <laughs> did I? No, I said, uh, man, <laughs> this is really cool ass stuff. <laughs> that rhymes, right? Yeah, that's what I said. Uh, uh, roll persuade with disadvantage, please, or deception with disadvantage. I said, man, you guys seem really ass blasted. Uh, uh, yeah, I, was trying I meant to, to was whisper trying to that. Power district, man. What did you say, Bray? Uh, five, but I meant to whisper that. But go ahead. Five. Uh, ooh, I um, no. I listen. I'm gonna keep my eyes on all of you. I, I know listen, you're with the I, watch. But... I just have kind of a horse fetish, and I just want to check out these horses. <laughs> is that gonna be good? <laughs> he steps in between you and the horses, and is like, uh, "Please, please don't come near those anymore." <laughs> okay, great, 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 great. Cool. But but you you all said you had some questions. Yeah. Uh... Oh, I just need a ride, but. <laughs> <laughs> <It's an hour. laughs> oh well, a ride, of course, to the tower district. Yes, well, I, I can take you. We've got to go through the, the, the barricade at the bridge, of course. Uh, but to get to the point, uh, did you uh, by any chance drop off a woman uh, a couple nights back the same cross street? Women? Well, I drop off women, women and men all the time. Uh, you'd have to give me a bit more detail than that. Uh, she was carrying, uh, I kind of just points at this baby. <laughs> she may have looked a little bit like Tom Hanks. <laughs> <laughs> That is genetics. I mean, you can't. Yeah. Her or the dad? No, you're right. Um, well, I, uh, I do, I do. That is, that baby is familiar to me now. He says, "Yes, this baby. Uh, I, I have seen it before. I looked into those very baby eyes." And and you watched it spit fire and I spit start fire. Throw, I start throwing up the same bag of coins, <laughs> catching them. <laughs> 
Well, if you'll if you'll slide a couple dragons my way, of course I'd be I'd be obliged. I'd happily give you more information. I'll yes, pull I... out my citation pad. Uh, you you'll driving? do it for free. Are, are you <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> We're blackmailing and bribing. <laughs> <laughs> this is when lawful and neutral characters try to get someone to do the same thing. <laughs> now we just need someone chaotic to stab him. <laughs> you know, as I stab, <laughs> I have a rapier. <laughs> I just said, play it cool, man. <laughs> as you try to get closer to the horses. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, all right. Listen. No citations. No dragons. D doesn't matter to me. Uh, of course. Listen. I did see this woman the other night. Uh, this baby rings a bell. Of course. Uh, I didn't see any fire, bre fire breathing. That's an interesting detail. But, but no. It was a yes. A couple nights back, uh, around eight, uh, little after eight in the night, I remember, and uh, I, I took her from from all the way back up in um, in the tower district. I could even give you the address if you want the spot where I picked her up from. And Absolutely. I brought her down to here. Past the It's a lucky guess. I didn't even... Fuck yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how, about you you just, how about you just take us there, bud? <laughs> I, I suppose. Uh, it's two silver for a ride. Uh, yeah, that sounds good. Yep. All right. Oh, man. I, I want to sit so up front close to the horses. <laughs> 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 the right <laughs> shotgun. <laughs> climb the horse. <laughs> <laughs> You're riding the horse as the carriage is going through town. <laughs> Will he let me do that? If no. I pay him extra? Uh, if you pay if you pay extra, he, he grumbles and then says, uh, slip me another slip me another silver. I'll let you ride on the horse. And I lean over to Thorin. This this bit has gotten a little too far, huh? Uh, yeah, I'm a little concerned that this fake fetish is the real I don't know yeah. if it's a bit, guys. <laughs> don't I'm gonna let. slip him another silver, and it's so I can ride on the horse. And I'm gonna go wee. <laughs> maybe yeah. Uh, maybe you and me will just hold on to the baby. Yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, advisable. Yeah. But in actuality, I am going to cast a spell. Oh, okay. It's called Speak with Animals. <laughs> Amazing. And so this animal is going to have to do. Oh no, I could just do that. So I'm going to whisper to the horse, and uh, I'm going I'm, the, the horses, and ask them if they remember the baby that we have with us. Okay, one second. Well, we're about to get a full Turner horse. Oh. Uh, uh, folks, uh, now is a good time to shout out our sponsor, um, uh, Pink Wild Harvest. Chapstick. Wild harvest chapstick, delicious. Mm. Uh, um, it's a citrus it, bomb. Now, usually when I get when I eat chapstick, it gets really stuck in my teeth. So the cart begins to trundle its way north. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You're interrupting district. our freaking marketing, bro. You, we have oh, a sponsor, and um, and you ruined it. So now we're gonna lose all that sweet chapstick. No, go ahead. I want to hear who the sponsor was. <laughs> Uh, it's wild harvest chapstick. So usually Amazing. when I eat chapstick, it gets really stuck in my teeth and gums. Uh, wild harvest doesn't do that. It goes down smooth, comes out smooth. It is probably the best laxative that I have ever had. <laughs> and it keeps both ends. Yeah. 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 Keeps both your lips real chapped. <laughs> real chapped. Not chapped. Yeah, not and, chapped. Uh, I think uh, if you use... Use the promo code Wild Harvest Chapstick now. You'll receive a free extra tube of long chapstick uh, mm -hmm. in the mail. It's one of these. They're a bit unwieldy, but you'll find that they're great. It's basically just like a push lollipop, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <clears throat> anyway. For, for his and her pleasure. <laughs> and her. Thank you very they ID much, Wild you. Harvest uh, Chapstick. And now back to the show. So the, uh, the, the cart begins trundling through the city. And you hear the, uh, the footsteps of the, the clip clop of the horse. Are they wearing the plastic shoes? That's cool. <laughs> uh, big Very shout out to um, is to Coca Cola for sponsoring our <laughs> our soundtrack oh. here. Um, so you guys are are going through the city on this horse, and you guys will get to talk to the guy as you're sitting in the back. You can just talk over his shoulder, but for now, Bray is talking to the horse. So, <laughs> you can't speak with the animal, and the horse is now uh, speaking with you. All right. 
Hey, fellas, do you guys recognize this baby? Wait, I look down and see what gender they are. Are they both fellas? Uh, they're they're both fellas. Yes. Okay. Hey, fellas, you guys have, uh, you guys remember this baby that we're traveling with? Super annoying. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm going to need to get a good look at the baby. <laughs> okay. Um, just, I guess, turn your big head and take a look. Hey, oh, uh, big head. <laughs> hey, I sorry, pride myself on my baby. small head. He turns himself around. <laughs> uh, hey, Soren, hold up that baby real quick. I just kind of some fresh air. Lean, yeah. <laughs> okay, so the horse sees the baby and... <laughs> yeah, I recognize the baby. <laughs> Uh, do you remember the ride that you guys gave that baby? Of course. It, Sir John, you remember that ride? Ooh. And the, uh, the other horse turns over. That's right, Jack. I do remember that ride. Yes. Uh, just a couple nights ago, near near 830. Uh, you guys are a couple characters. I, I tell you what, I like it. I like your energy here. Uh, now tell me, uh, what can you guys tell me about this? We're trying to find the baby's mom. Do you guys, you guys tell me anything about the baby's mom? Ooh, what a lost baby, Mama. Mm, yeah. Mm. I uh, I don't remember too much, but I do remember she she came out of a shop on the uh, the east side of the street. But that's that's about all I could tell you. Uh, what about you, Jack? You got anything for me? May, uh, there might be some oats in it for you. Oats? <laughs> I might I have a salt the lake. after this. Um, <laughs> I don't remember um, any any other details. Uh, she looked in a hurry and uh, kind of scared, but that was it. In canon, is Bray speaking as a horse, or is he speaking? I think we've established that I'm speaking as a horse. <laughs> so to you guys, it just looks like I'm really into this fetish. <laughs> <laughs> It, it looks as like, yeah, this guy has had the weirdest customer of his year, for sure. <laughs> is there some, is, can you write, is there a, a law against this? Against Bray doing what he's doing? Yeah, well, <laughs> this is to Soren. <laughs> oh, yes. uh, oh, yeah, no, he's uh, he's breaking a couple laws right now. <laughs> um, it's a good thing I have immunity. <laughs> <laughs> License to kill they gave me, which I assume also comes with license to horse license to horse that's the newest james bond movie actually <laughs> james bond license to horse <laughs> the um, the opening chase scene is just a horse chase <laughs> it's not even james bond in it uh i'm gonna start we're gonna start a, a new uh website called world star, world, world star clip clop and, uh, horse bike. <laughs> <laughs> All it is is horse videos. I really, I love the image of this horse. Just like, hold me back, Wilbur, and this other horse just like puts his hooves over him, just like trying to pull him back. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so. All right, guys. Are you sure there's nothing else you guys remember? We really need to find this uh, this kid's mom. Um, give me one second. Hmm. I just burned a spell slot for this. Just keep that in mind. Oh wow! Um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm telling the horses. Horses, this. man. It's really getting. It's concerning. <laughs> <laughs> He's just neighing to to these horses. <laughs> the most disturbing part is that they're neighing back. That's the worst part. <laughs> these horses, they're. I mean, oh, he would, his brain's gonna get poked if he. <laughs> the lo, just the logistics don't 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 match very well. Do you want Lyme disease? Because that's how you get Lyme disease. <laughs> uh, okay. So the horse is, uh, it says one thing. <sighs> well, I, we have seen her before. I think uh, we've we, we seen her once, uh, a couple months ago. She was very pregnant. <laughs> and uh, she was heading south, set, heading uh, west into the Black Lake District. But it's been so long that I don't remember the exact address. Okay. What store did you say you saw her coming out of recently? Uh, something on the east side of the street. All right, thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Anytime. Thanks. From Jack and John. And they turn back 
to the journey ahead of him. <clears throat> double J. Great, everyone. Thanks. I'll take double pay this week for uh, for the time and energy taken on clip clopping while talking. Yeah, that was really good. Oh. Thank you. Or tick talking, you know. All right, great. <clears throat> okay, so uh, while this is happening, uh, the guy in the carriage turns back over his shoulder and says, "Do your uh, your friend normally do stuff like this? He's just neighing at the horses up there." Friend is a a loose term. Mm, I understand. <laughs> uh, this was. Frankly, I don't even know how we became co-workers. Every, you know, like I was at the gate, and then and then we just had this baby, and you know, he suplexed a couple of guys out the windows. <laughs> I'm just going along with it right now, yeah. you know. So like business partner, you would say probably something like business partner, uh, acquaintance at best. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you're you're being pretty generous. Hey, you know, I, I can hear you guys. <laughs> Oh, you're not winning anymore? You're hurting, you're hurting my feelings over here. I am a man. I have feelings. <laughs> and I'm Winnie. <laughs> the horses perk up and, and you hear them like Winnie to each other a little bit. But you don't know what they're saying. <laughs> Brain, I, what, is, what is Brady here? I say to Jack and John, don't listen to him. <laughs> Jack and John are like, I don't understand the dialect that guy's speaking. It's super weird. Oh, sorry, is my accent? Yeah, it's your accent. Yeah, <laughs> I'm more of a mountain horse. That was a that was a plain. Yeah, they're speaking plains horse. Yeah, they yeah elf horses like now nah, they don't they don't speak that kind of of language. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, um, and, and and so yes, this guy says. Um, so you're doing some kind of some kind of police business out there in in the tower district, hunting this woman down. I mean, we're just, I'm just trying to get rid of this fucking baby, dude. You know, like don't listen to him, little Hanks. It's fire and it shits fire, and I mean, it has been a handful. If I'm being honest, you guys should get some wild harvest chapstick for this baby. <laughs> you know that wild harvest ch chapstick is really good. I'm just nothing but impressed with it. I don't think this baby eats solid food yet. Well, I just fed it bread and cheese, bud. Yeah. <laughs> baby bird is it. <laughs> you're going to have to baby bird it, Wild Harvest Chapstick. I hope you're ready for that. That's next. We're role playing it, too. It Get goes ready. down smooth and then comes back up smooth. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Okay. Yep. So. Yeah, so you guys, uh, after a, a, a bit more of your travel, the carriage take you, takes you quickly, much faster than you would have, to the checkpoint where the man leans down. He, he nods to the guy, um, Jay, your friend Jay, Average, Joe, at the checkpoint. He comes back in, looks through the, the wagon briefly, and then uh, signs something on a piece of paper and sends the rest of you guys through up north into Black Lake. You guys go through Black Lake District, and then I suppose we can get out our all macaroni and cheese here. Mm, amazing. So you guys, we'll chart out the path. Oh, good, good. <clears throat> Where is it? Wow, amazing. You guys see this? This is great. Okay, so you guys were, were over here in the Protector's Enclave, and you went back over here, and um, you came to, you came across, you're coming across the bridge, and now you're making your way through the city streets until finally you come to the east to this long, uh, this long north-south street that goes, uh, yeah, in, in the, the tower district. It's a, a bit run down, but you looks like you're near a marketplace and what you're at now is just like this line of storefronts. Three of them pop out to you as important. Um, these are the most busy. Let me see here. Let me turn off my pointer. Thank you, Google Slides. You've been an immense help. Okay, so I'll draw it out here. Ooh, let's get some thicker lines. Boom. You hear this crinkling right now? Is that, is that audible? What are you doing? Or what is happening? Never mind then. Perfect. <laughs> That's all I needed to know. We stand. Okay, so here's the street north south. And um, I hate this. Hold on. Boom. Okay, here we go. Here's the street north south. 
And then on the east side of the street, there are a couple buildings. That would be better with a square function. Let's do it. Shout out to my boy Zoom for all the help that he's offering in these trying times. Okay, and then uh, one on the west side of the street. Okay, so let's see here. On the west side, we've got a place with a sign that hangs off the top called um, Hits Potions. Get out of there, bold font. Got him. And on the east side of the street, we have up here, let me see, Laney's Ladies. Who knows what kind of establishment that is? That's why I'm going first. <laughs> I, I hate to break it to you, Bray, but there's going to be a big old zero on horses there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, the last one on the east side of the street here is Albert's, oh boy, Albert, oh, Albert's Ales. And uh, you, even though it's pretty early in the morning, you can see there's like this saloon style swinging door uh, of this tavern here, Albert's Ales. Okay. And I uh, realized quickly, this lady's, that is, must be why this baby's so dysfunctional. She was drinking while she was pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> it's all coming together. Oh. She was drinking, drinking that, that fireball. Yeah, Bray, what did you call it earlier? Fireball? You had like a knockoff name for it. Uh, I don't remember. Cool. In our first session, yeah, we've been drinking fantasy fireball. It's crazy. Scorching, scorching rays, <laughs> right out the mouth. <laughs> scorching rays is actually the diff name of a different tavern. It's more of a mom and pop kind of thing. Oh, I think I said something about like firebrand whiskey or something like that. Oh yeah, that's what it was. Firebrand. That's good. Okay, um, so you guys are. Oh, are we off of the horse and carriage now? Are yeah, the guy off of horses. Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, um, bro. Gonna, that's up to you, man. I'm going to talk to. Uh, I'm going to tell Oli and Soren. Did you, did you guys hear what those horses said? <laughs> uh, I mean, dude, that's some business for yourself. No, 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 no. Uh, okay, no, I, I see. Okay, yes, that's. Listen, those horses were telling me, but they. Hey, I don't. I don't doubt they're good people, man. I mean. The uh, finer horses you can't find. But, <laughs> but listen, they uh, they've seen they they know this the, they know this baby's mom. They've seen her before. They said that they saw her coming out of a store on the east side. So uh, they also said uh, they saw could you have her... them point out the store by any chance? Uh, well, the dude. Hey, dude, Mister. What's your name again? Carriage driver. Oh, don't think you you have forgotten my name. Yes, I'm a uh, Carry the Carriage Man. Nice. Hey, Carry. Uh, you yes. told us what what uh, she came out of the store on the east side. Which 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 store was it? I I wasn't exactly sure. It was dark. I was parked on the south side of the street before it enters into the plaza back there, and I just saw her rushing from the northeast side of the street. I wasn't exactly sure which building she came out of. Fucking thanks, dude. Uh, <laughs> all right. Cool. Well, there's only two. Stores. Are you, oh wait, I, I'm gonna jingle my bag of points. <laughs> <laughs> are, are the you, citation. Are you, yeah. sure you, are you sure you don't remember? Uh, yes, yes, very sure this time, and not just because if I take it, there'll be a citation coming. <laughs> okay. Uh, I would want to jingle my bag of coins. I don't think it jingles. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that's what you think. <laughs> 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 So those horses said it's definitely one of these east side stores. Um, uh, so putting two and two together, the mom was a lady. There's a store here called Ladies. I think we should start with Albert's Ales. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty presumptuous. It, that, is that the closest store, I guess, that we're to? Um, yeah, you guys are you guys are like right 
here on the south side of the street. So Might as well, yeah, make our way up. Cool. Okay, so you, you pop into this saloon-style door. It swings open, and a, a older wait, man wait, with... Wait, wait, wait. Is someone going to use thaumaturgy? Yeah, uh, I, was about, I was about to say no, 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 no. It's thaumaturgy. <laughs> yeah. So you, you thaumaturgy that ish open. And, and on the back swing, so it goes, it blasts open, swings back, and then on this motion. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't get, like, body clapped by the yeah. swing back. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> uh, okay, so you guys waltz in. And uh, like 80s metal starts playing after you thaumaturgy, the doors open. Uh, White. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in the corner, there's like a woman in tight leather pants, like on a hood of a white car. Like you guys know how it is. She's I'm somehow gonna, drenched. I'm going to go straight to her. <laughs> <laughs> you I shake your head. Now. Oh, uh, must have just been seeing things. Uh, instead, at the bar, <laughs> there is an older man in a white suit. And he's, he's leaning on the counter. He's got a, a tuft of white hair this black vest on he he nods a quick salute at you and, welcome to albert sales uh, it's me albert what can i do for you uh need a drink i will have a drink. place after yep, all uh, some firebrand whiskey for me and yeah the after the shit that we just saw um me, <laughs> <laughs> me and this guy here and yeah. we could probably use uh something stiff uh yeah i'm making a boiler maker Oh, boiler maker. All right. He, give, um, that, give that necrotic touch. <laughs> necrotic touch. <laughs> I hear you can actually go to jail for that. <laughs> okay. So, um, he, I have he, equinic touch. Is that something? <laughs> <laughs> you should be in jail for that. <laughs> uh, give me one second here, gentlemen. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, great. <clears throat> so yes, he, he leans over the counter and then uh, pointing to Bray, he said, or he points to each unit and says, uh, two two bolts each from you, and uh, holds out his hand as he turns back to prepare the drinks. Just uh, open up a tab, bud. Ah, oh, tab. All right. Well, I'll hold you to it. And uh, he turns back. And uh, he begins to prepare the prepare the drinks, pouring the shot into the beer, etc. Yeah. Uh, so, my name is Whitmore. You can put it under my cup. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't go that far. That's uh, my partner there. Uh, what? Uh, oh, how do? How does this guy? Who is this guy's voice? <laughs> <clears throat> that sounds great. I'll uh, I'll just uh, I'll, I'll start open a tab, and I'll have one of you guys pay it by the by the time we get out here. Okay. Yeah, Whitmore will pay it, for sure. Uh, as long as one of you guys is Whitmore, that sounds perfect. <clears throat> cool. So, uh, what can I do for you, gents? You just here to sit and sit and drink? Uh, and he actually, pushes the drinks toward why don't you. You have a drink also. Uh, why don't uh, you have a firebrand whiskey with me, pal? Uh, listen, I can't do that. I've uh, I've been in trouble for drinking on that job before, uh, back when this was Bartle's Beers. And, um, well, that's how I would say I had to get that place shut down and have my first name changed. So, uh, wow. So you're Albert. Whoa, 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 whoa. You were Albert of Albert's Ales. I am Albert of Albert's Ales. You're like a Wait, local we're... hero, man. Arnold's beers. I uh, yes, I am the the alphabet alcoholic, as they say. So you're your own boss, and you got in trouble. I don't like to talk about it. We have a tough past. So me, me. let me just just so I'm understanding, you are an alcoholic, and you have a bar called <laughs> AA. <laughs> uh, yeah actually the only change that i give is uh chips for sobriety <laughs> uh but but really i can't i couldn't have a drink with you i'm sorry gentlemen really uh but please have a seat anywhere or here at the bar and i'd love to have conversation with you as you can tell any points around in the empty room i don't have much else going on yeah, well, uh, we got a baby, and uh, as you know, babies come with moms. So I've heard. Can We're trying to make a, a return on not our purchase, but purchase. You know. So have you seen this baby before? Does we don't have to look receive. familiar. He, he looks Is this your baby? baby? You kind of look like Tom Hanks. <laughs> well, first of all, <laughs> thank you. I don't even know who that is. Can I roll and, a perception uh, check to see how much he looks like Tom Hanks? Yeah, go ahead. Also, did you switch to hearth music? Oh, no, sorry. 
Oh, no, you're good. I don't know if you heard me earlier. Shout out to John P. Uh, 16. Yeah. Yeah, a 16 okay he looks decently like like older tom hanks but he's got a bit of ron selleck in him you know who's like, ron you mean like tom sorry selleck? i i meant <laughs> in my head i had ron perlman and then i said ron selleck <laughs> tom selleck's ugly little brother ron <laughs> <laughs> little brother wow <laughs> uh hey uh this baby have you seen this baby I hold up, baby. I can't say that I have. Uh, you're looking for its mom, yeah? Uh, yeah. Any like pregnant it. women in or here? Or its dad, you know, whatever. Mm. You kind of look like you might be his dad. I see the resemblance between me and the baby and Tom Hanks and Ron Perlman and Tom Selleck, yes. But um, I don't know if I've, uh, I don't know if I've seen, seen a pregnant woman around, at least not in my establishment. Oh, all right, dude. Well, uh, feel free to enjoy your drinks, though. Yeah, I mean, sure. Can I uh, <laughs> take it uh, to go? Uh, yeah, since you're not going to be driving any carriage, I suppose you won't violate any liquor laws. Um, let me get one of my to-go cups, and uh, he takes one down from the back and hands one uh, to each of you. Sweet. Uh, yeah, I'm going to Laney's Ladies. Man, this guy is worthless wow uh all right like i'm Trump just gonna speech. ask him uh you hear any rumors around town lately uh rumors around town hmm well what kind of rumors are you looking for the average run of the room run of the real rumors uh let's talk about crime rumors any good crime rumors you've heard <laughs> I, I see the oblivion the like what did you say, Jonathan? I blast. I thought the church is a door open again. <laughs> yeah. Time Crime in. rumors. Yeah. Dun dun. Uh, dun yeah, dun, your dun, your dun, oblivion dun. conversation training out so hard right now. After you can ask him about crime rumors again, and I'll just say the exact same words, and then you can move down to like family rumors if you want. Yeah. What do you Pretty know close. about the Reapers? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Have you heard of the High Elves? <laughs> All right, we're out of here. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thanks, bud. Uh, put it on what's his name's tab. So he he turns and, and he says, "Well, I do hear a bit of, a bit about crime rumors. I mean, they've got the uh, over in the west, you know, the the Nashers causing a lot of trouble around these parts. But there's one thing I've heard coming in in all my time through here that not a lot of other people have heard. Uh, some people they've been causing trouble in the city recently. Uh, not any Nashers or any uprisings or anything like that." Something a little more, uh, I don't know, uh, s sinister, I'd say. Uh, I've heard heard tale that there's a group of people who they're just out for vengeance. And uh, I, I don't know, it's almost some, some kind of cult. Uh, heard overheard a couple of my patrons talking about it. Over, he points to one of the corners in the bar, over in that corner. Uh, wasn't exactly sure what to make of it, but apparently people, all I heard was vengeance and the boss, and, and that's really it. Sounds like they even had some kind of hit, perhaps, out on someone. Hmm. Would you recognize them if you saw them again? Oh, well, pro probably, yeah, almost certainly. Who would play them in a movie? From oh, I would say, uh, who was that guy? Um, Adam Driver, like an older Adam Driver with blonde hair and uh, slightly, slightly shorter eyelashes. And on the other hand, uh, I think like a, a good classic, um, like a Matt, who's that guy from uh, Magnum PI? I saw it on the, the, it was, the uh, portal last week. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Uh, he's, uh, he just did the cover of TV Guide. You're talking about uh, <laughs> Burt Reynolds. <laughs> that right? Burt Reynolds. Burt <laughs> Reynolds, my boy. <laughs> Yeah, I, no, that's it. And uh, I thought both of them would be would be great stars on World Star Clip Clop. But other than that, yeah, no more details I can offer you. Hey, which one of you is uh, Lainey? As Ladies. I answer the door. You're, <laughs> you've, uh, you're, you're in the other place? <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Way out of there. What's your thaumaturgy plan? Uh, you window doors, you know, the works. Boxes, drawers on... 
Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah shelves, I mean, everything. Pockets. <laughs> you saw my pockets out. <laughs> ah, that's good. Um, okay, so you you go over to Lainey's, uh, Lainey's ladies, and the um, the door is it like it, it's locked. It's unable to be thaumaturgied. Uh, is there a window I can peer into? Uh, sure. There are two windows on the the face of the store here. Okay, I'm gonna like you know. <laughs> you get conjuring dude you know where it's like Wah! and her face appears in the window uh no you're looking into the establishment and there is uh there's one woman who's sitting at a table across from the door just kind of like tapping her hand on the on the table and uh there's another woman in the back standing behind a, what looks like a bar in uh in this place and yeah just two two ladies there Hmm. Is there a second story? Yeah, there are actually three stories to this. Oh shit! Um, can I like get to a second? Can I climb up? Like, sure. what's the, what's the situation? So you um, roll me a perception check. Ooh, baby, perception. Uh, twenty-four. Okay, nice. So you spot very easily a couple of handholds and footholds where you could like put your foot on this part of the windowsill and then uh, grab onto this part of a pipe and then pull yourself up and over. And um, then you'd, you'd be able to grab and like look up into the window from there. So if you want to do a climb check, you'd get to do it with advantage or a, um, I suppose, acrobatics or athletics. Well, okay. that's awesome because one of those was a nat one. Perfect. Um, acrobatics, that is a 17. Okay, so yeah, you grab on and you're able to just barely peek over inside. And what do I see? So you are looking at, you aren't able to, to see super well. You're having a little bit of a tough time holding yourself up onto the windowsill. Uh, but here there's just like an empty room and it looks like it's been empty for, uh, it looks like it's been empty for a little bit. Um, yep. I try to open the window. Um, let's see. You you try to open the window, you stick a hand on it, and thunk, but it's locked. Mm. Locked from the inside? Yes. Can uh, I pay the bartender and try to just catch up and yeah. go hang out? That sounds great. Yep, so it's a total of six, uh, six bolts or silver pieces. Okay, I'll pay them. And, cool. Uh, yep, uh, Soren and I will hoof it to... Yeah. Laying these ladies and just kind of hang out. Okay, hey, so you uh, guys. Uh, oh, go ahead, sir. No, 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 you go ahead. No, I'm good. Oh, oh, oh I thought you said something. Cool. No. Okay, um, so you guys, you guys head up the street and you're now standing outside of this establishment, uh, watching as this as Oleander in plain daylight is just like hanging off a window, peeking in. <laughs> <laughs> Can I take a dagger and like try to like cut a hole out the window for me to get into and like reach my hand in and unlock the window? Wait, you, you like cut a hole in the glass? Yeah. This is some like Looney Tunes logic. You like cut a perfect circle and then like push it in and then like, <laughs> yeah, oh, and it like bends. I'm gonna do the natural thing and just knock on the door. <laughs> okay. Hey, what the fuck are you doing? You blow my cover. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so um, on the one hand, you Soren, you hear someone walking over to the door to un unbolt it and open it up. On the other hand, Oleander, uh, make me a sleight of hand check <laughs> uh, with disadvantage because you're hanging on from the oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's still a fucking fifteen. Okay, so you're able to like loudly scratch the glass, <laughs> but you don't. Uh, you don't cut through don't cut a hole uh yeah you can just you you get a pretty deep scratch and generally a circle but you don't you're not able to pop it out and right. uh, as that's happening yeah, the door I'm just there i guess <laughs> gotta bring a chunk of ceramic next time come on dude mm, wow so fun fact kylie's broken into houses before <laughs> that's, uh, that's what we've learned from tonight's stream i'm about to cast and flick wounds on this window <laughs> uh, in the text of the inflict wounds i'm sure it says has to be a living creature yeah. <laughs> sure on a creature 
who knows if this window is a mimic or not. Yeah, your hand actually sticks to it. Ah, roll initiative. <clears throat> uh, okay, so the, the front door opens inward, and you see a woman standing there before you. She's wearing uh, a robe and otherwise not incredibly clothed. That's all I'll say about that. Um, and um, here's the only woman voice I can do for role playing. Well, actually, there are two. So one, there's no woman, which is just so high and squeaky that it doesn't even really matter if it's not a female voice. And then two, uh, like southern white woman. So we're going to go with that one. OK. Uh, great. Yep, that's that's all. OK. Well, good to see y'all here. Uh, what can I do for you? <laughs> what are you gentlemen interested in? Also, is that someone in my window? Come on now. Uh, what are you on. doing up there, hold sir? Hold on, hold on, hold on. How the fuck did she notice me? What do you mean? <laughs> Your legs are at like eye level. <laughs> so she's in the she's inside door. You're right. Okay. What can I do for you two gentlemen? Yeah, I, uh, I was wondering if you had a few questions. Uh, or, or if you could uh, give some time to answer a few questions. Or if you want to ask us some questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right. I'm the one doing the question answering around here. Uh, no, you two come right on in. She invites you. Uh, she invites you inside, and uh, one of you closes the door behind you, leaving Ollie <laughs> hanging up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go to the room. <laughs> <laughs> I have rustic hospitality, so this is like just perfect. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> She's like, hello, sugar. <laughs> uh what now what can i do for y'all now she looks like are you uh you a watchman uh that i am uh ma'am uh, but to the point uh we're actually looking for this uh young lad's uh mother just wondering if you had seen him before she uh she takes a breath and says oh oh my and she she goes over to look at the baby Mm. You know, it could be. Where Where did you get this baby? Uh, the uh, where is not important. The The mother part is what we need to get to. Well, I wouldn't know anything for sure, but. Uh, well, it's tough, but a couple months ago, one of our ladies here, she says, um, did have a baby. Um, and recently, she's disappeared. We've been awful worried about her. Is that. Is that the child? It, uh, it, it may be. Uh, what is this uh, woman's name, by chance? Uh, her name's Treya. She was one of our girls here. Uh, that's H-R-E-Y-A. Right. Roll a slide of hand check to open a window. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay, so back up top. Uh, Ollie, you can uh, you try the old credit card trick with your dagger, so like oh. slip it underneath the, the crack. Oh, baby. 18. Nice. Okay, so you hear the latch click as you're able to open up the window. <clears throat> and I crawl in. Okay, sounds good. You crawl in. Roll me a stealth check. Hey, that's a 25. <laughs> <laughs> R.I.P. <laughs> you, uh, you open up the window super quiet and just slot, you just slither in and you disappear inside and like a, a man and his wife who are walking by downstairs, they're down outside. They just like your feet are right over their head and then they go up and into the window and they just have no clue. So you are uh, sleuthing, sleuthing around inside the brothel now. I thought, Congratulations. Yeah, I thought you were talking about a man and his wife inside this brothel. No. <laughs> um. <laughs> Stealth right back out the window. That's, that's the plan. We don't want to get one cool house for that. Anybody. No, that's yeah. You're right. That's a ridiculous scenario. Okay, so um, the the window is open and you're in this uh, empty, abandoned room by yourself. What do you want to do? Uh, what's uh, what's the, I'm gonna enter the hallway and kind of check things out, I guess. Okay, so you open the door and uh, uh, roll a stealth check. That's another twenty-five. Nice. Okay, so there's no there's like a creak from the door. There's like a but you cough over it and so no one can hear the creak <laughs> is brothel haunted yeah. <laughs> it's just all loose floorboards everywhere the whole time uh so yes you um you come out of the hallway and there it's this hallway this long hallway with a red carpet and doors on the right and the left is there like uh any rooms that would be like uh one of the girls like personal rooms like like their own not like a not like a, a you know 
a work room. I understand. Thank you. It's like a living quarter. Painfully awkward yeah. for however long we have to do this. <laughs> uh, you don't see any up top here. Actually, roll me a wisdom, a wheezy, wheezy check. We can refer perception. to them as the office. <laughs> is, this per, is this perception? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Give me a perception. Uh, 15? Nice. 21 natural, by the way. 24 natural perception? Passive? 20, 23 passive. 23. Amazing. Uh, okay, so yes, you you don't see any non-office rooms, any personal rooms up here. These all look like office rooms, ah, if you will. Okay, well, I will head to floor number two. Okay, so so you were on the third, and then you're going down? Yes, I believe. Okay. Cool. So you head down to the second floor. And uh, you see here in this hallway more personal rooms, but as you're passing by on the staircase and overhearing their conversation downstairs, because there's this like, when it goes down a flight, it goes around like to the to a loft kind of banister and overlooks the rest of the, the living area. Uh, you do see a door downstairs off to the side uh, and it's, it's closed. You're not sure where it leads, but uh, it, it may lead to another section of the house that could have these personal rooms. Floor two or floor one? Floor one, so on the main floor where the conversation's going on. Okay. <clears throat> All right, wait, wait, wait. So you said there was more personal rooms or more work rooms? Sorry, so floors two and three are all work rooms, and there's a door uh, on floor one that may lead to okay. a personal I'm going to head to that door. Okay, so um, we'll make your stealth checks for going down the snares and sneaking past everyone. Uh, well, so yeah, and I'll, like, wave at them from behind, like, <laughs> You know, super distracted, like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ollie, what are you doing back there? <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> okay, uh, great. Back in the conversation. Um, so this southern lady. So y'all, uh, y'all looking for uh, y'all looking for Freya, yeah? And this, uh, well, this I think this may be her daughter. Uh, how did you come across her? Now we, we've been awful worried. Do you know where she is? Was she disappeared like, a couple oh, nights ago. Wait, uh, isn't this a young lad, though? We established that our daughter. Oh, sorry. Yes, I, I was talking about the young lad's mother. No, this is a boy, for sure. Okay. Uh, but where? So where did you find him? Uh, a couple nights ago, um, we, we just woke up one morning. and uh, Well, a couple days ago, we woke up one morning, and, and she was gone, Rhea and her son. And this is him, perhaps? Uh, yeah, we uh, we definitely we picked him up from some unsavory types. Um, oh, but no. back to the mother. What what more can you tell us about her uh, family heritage? Any any details would be helpful. Well, there's not a lot. Um, yeah, I can't tell you a lot about her family. She just kind of came here uh, when she was younger. We we raised her until she was old enough to work, and then she's been she's been part of the family ever since. Um, yeah, she uh, she's had a, a kind of hard life in Neverwinter. Always seemed like she was just trying to scrape by, and she always she had dreams of getting out of the city, you know, going to start her own life somewhere else. But uh, it's tough here, especially over in the River District, you know. Uh, did she have any uh, regulars? Let's say she sits back to think. Hmm, not any regulars that I could think of. I mean, of course, there's the the locals. Uh, I, I could get you a couple names of some of the local guys that come up from the taverns late at night. Some of those regulars. Uh, Bray and Soren, insight checks, please. 13. Nice. 18. Okay, so Bray, you don't notice this, but Soren, you do notice this, um, that she is right now, uh, she's not totally truthful. There's something that she hasn't totally told you about the regular situation. Uh, but but yeah, that's all. That's all I know about her regulars. Is it though? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not one to be uh, played around here. Uh, I have questions, and you're going to answer these questions truthfully. Listen, my friend here, uh, you can get pretty, pretty crazy, real quick. So I think I want to help you out here. Let's just answer his questions, um, and you know, keep him calm because when once he gets upset. Uh, there's no, there's no real controlling him. Oh wow, he's one of those unhinged types. He's one of them unhinged types. You heard about? Oh, I see them all, all the time on the TV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's also, he's also a screamer. Oh, not a screamer. He is a screamer. <laughs> okay, well, 
Listen, uh, I also, you know, uh, you know, I want to I just, we need some help. We want to find, uh, we want to find Kreia, and I'm hoping that you can help us. And I start kind of slowly tossing up the bag of coins <laughs> very softly <laughs> in my hands. You're, you're a one trick pony, man. Uh, it's really. <laughs> Coin in one hand, flower oh, in the other. Don't take Tommy in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> You're a one-trick horse. <laughs> uh, okay, so as you guys are about to roll those persuade checks, we go back to Oleander, who is now quietly sneaking down the stairs into the living area. It, uh, what, it was a nat 20, by the way. Oh, gosh. Okay, so, so you are... 27 total. Sneaky oh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> When did like the wallpaper time... change color? Wow. <laughs> uh, every time you like step on a creaky board, a, the woman behind the bar like clinks a glass on accident, and it's just <laughs> the sound is totally covered up. And you make your way to the side door, um, and you're, you 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 crack it open and look inside without a no without a sound, and you see that it leads downstairs into some kind of basement. Uh, you yeah, know, we'll go down. All right, yeah, already, so you... we're deep now. You slip through the door, close it quietly behind you, and let it latch, and then uh, you you head down the stairs. It's lit by lamps. It's a really nice, nicely uh, decorated area. It's much nicer than any of the upstairs rooms. Uh, and you enter, and you see you're in another hallway. Um, and here, there, yeah, there's like a it's a long hallway with doors on each side. Um, and yep, so long hallway, doors on each side. What do you want to do? Do I hear anybody in the rooms? Are there are all the rooms like closed? All the doors are. Uh, some of the doors are open, and you do hear there's one uh, one door on the left, like close to where you are, and one door on the right, close to where you are. Um, where, or sorry, one door on the left, close to where you are, and one door on the right, like way farther down the hall, that's open, and you hear the sounds of like people shifting around and moving uh, inside of those. Check out the close one on the left, then. Okay, so you, yeah, you got that that twenty three passive. So we'll just give you some freebies for a while. Uh, peek, peek your head around the the corner of this door, and you see a woman um, writing something in a journal, facing away from you, and uh, looking up outside at the, uh, or not outside because it's in a basement area, but like looking at a picture, like a small painting that she has on her bedside table, and then going back to writing in the journal. What does this lady look like? Um, she's got like blonde hair and um, yep, <laughs> I don't know. She's wearing like blue does the baby hat. Um, redhead. It's a redheaded baby. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, and okay, I guess we'll bypass this door for now. Are there so are there closed doors as well? Uh, yes, there are closed doors. There are quite a number of closed doors. You could just kind of roll yeah just uh i don't know well i'll see what's going on in the in the last door on the right okay so you hurry forward to the last door on the right and you look around this corner and you see a woman bent over uh the bed um she she's like making up the bed and then she's like looking underneath it and taking some personal effects off of the um off of the bedside table and she's tucking them under her arm and then she turns to begin to walk out of the door into the hallway what do you do uh fucking <laughs> go into a room into it into what like i open a door and like peek like so i get into a room and peek out of the door okay so you open the door so she's coming out of the out of this open door room and you just turn very quickly open the door and then go inside and you're peeking out of it and you look over your shoulder and there's a woman uh lying in bed sleeping in this room that you're in. <laughs> so just keep that in mind what do these two ladies look like uh there's so the lady rests in the bed um you're not able to see she has like a a nightcap on um and then the lady who is coming the woman coming out of the room has like black hair son of a bitch all right well uh black is a dominant gene yeah. <laughs> so uh there's no way yeah, you've got your like Punnett square. You're like, God, come on. Like, which of these parents is it? Okay, I'll wait for it to pass. And then, um, or can I, see, what does she have under her arm? So under her arm, there's like a picture. And uh, there's like, um, yeah, she has, she has a, a picture tucked under her arm in a picture frame. And then like, there's a hairbrush and two candles and a matchbox and um, 
like a, a few sheets of paper. Ah, shit's whack. I'll wait for it to pass <laughs> and then uh, go into her room. Okay, so you go into this room and you see that this room has now been, uh, you, you also closed the door quietly behind you for the sleeping woman. Uh, you see that this room has been stripped com almost completely bare at this point. You see hooks on the wall or nails where the where pictures or paintings would have been hung. And uh, a quick examination of the drawers reveals that there's nothing inside of them. The, yeah, uh, other than that, let, let's see, actually roll an investigate check for me. Um, it's Maddie, 14, 15? 15, nice. Okay, give me one sec. You hear one of the drawers like, rattles in a weird way as you open and close it. You're not exactly sure why. I will check for like a false bottom, maybe. Okay, nice. So you, um, you, you're you checking for a false bottom and you, you stick your fingernails in and like you, you pull up and you see inside uh, there's this small coin um, that has this on it. Uh, See if I can show. So it's a coin with these two faces. Are you guys able to see that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so you have a coin with two faces. One of them is like angry, and then the other face on the back is sad. Um, you, yeah, you can take the coin pocketed if you want to. Sure, yeah. Um, put it in my little, I got a little chest, chest pocket, put it right there. Okay, perfect. Um, no, is there anything else in the like the room has been stripped clean? Yeah, other than that, the room has been stripped okay. clean. I guess I'll just check out what she's doing now. Then, like, she heading upstairs? Yeah, so it looks like she's heading up the stairs. Okay, mm -hmm. then I will just keep an eye on the hall for now. Watch, okay, watch your leave. Sounds good. So I as you're doing your that... go, but. <laughs> Thank you, mid two thousands rap lyrics. <laughs> we yeah. we love. Okay, um, Soren Bray, you guys, would, uh, you're back up back up at the conversation, and you're now rolling persuade checks to see if you can get this woman to fork over any information. Uh, who wants to do it? And you get advantage because Bray is is bragging. Uh, I'm also playing good cop bad cop. Uh, that's you're true. Yes. Um, so yeah, Soren, you do it. Okay. He's projecting bad cop onto Soren. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So I got a nineteen. Okay, nice. Um, she, okay, so, yeah, well, okay, there was one regular. Listen, now, this is something that only I know, okay? So she turns around and uh, the door to, from the basement opens up and this woman that Ollie saw earlier comes up and she, uh, she like goes into another side room with these personal effects. Uh, she, she beckons for you to um, get up and come outside in the front door with her. Or actually, she takes you up back, sorry. She takes you out in a back door, closes it behind you, and you guys find yourself in a nice garden. Uh, it's, it's like this open courtyard. There's a fountain in the middle and a few benches. She takes you to one of the benches, looks around to see if there's anyone listening in, and then says low under her breath, there was one regular that she had. Well, only me and her knew about it. You see, some of the noble folk of this city, especially those in the public eye, they would come to places like this over here in the Tower District, uh, just to, to stay away from anyone who'd be prying in ways that uh, they didn't want to. Well, see, the problem is we had a real, really high, high-level customer with Hoya. Uh, actually, Lord Never Ember himself would visit uh, pretty frequently to come see her. So I don't know what you can do with that, but that's really all I've got to tell you. Uh, and do I make a connection with Lord Never Ember and have the baby having the same hair color or any similarities? No, Lord Never Ember has not red hair. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's not Tom Hanks. <laughs> <laughs> he, he does look a bit Tom Hanksy, but no red hair. Okay. Yeah. Um, Freya, so this woman, she, she also says, listen, if y'all are, y'all are investigating Freya's disappearance, well, uh, there is maybe one thing that might help you. I suppose uh, I suppose it would be nice. You could go. I, I followed her one time. You see, things got weird. She got pregnant a while ago, about a year. And uh, Freya got pregnant about a year ago. And uh, or maybe just under a year ago now. About nine months ago. <laughs> well, nine months and a couple months more than that. 
just uh, over you know <laughs> you know how pregnancy <laughs> works anyway i'm not going to explain it to you there's a yeah some little baby just grumbling around in there that's how it works and so uh yeah so she got pregnant a while ago and around the time that she got pregnant you know, uh, her her client this uh he stopped visiting around that time and and then she got really weird very moody uh she wouldn't she would barely even talk to us at that point just kept herself locked up in the room or back out here in the gardens and she'd often make trips random trips uh, out in the middle of the night I, I followed her on one of these trips and uh it led out west into the black lake district and she she scratches down a address for you guys uh, here it is here's the cross streets it's, it's this house and uh I saw her go into it. I didn't see anything other than that. I just went right back home afterwards, uh, took a carriage right back home. But th that's it. If you could investigate, perhaps maybe something's going on over there. I don't know. Uh, yeah, we uh, will do our uh, duty, and I'll uh, hand her a, a dragon. Okay. Now she she grabs it and she she nods. Thank you, sir. Pockets it. Is there is there anything else that we can do for you? Uh, just one last thing. Did she keep working after she got pregnant? No, she didn't actually. That was one of the things she refused to, which we understand. We certainly wouldn't force anyone to do that. Mm. Yeah, okay. Thank you for your time. Of course, and thank you, gentlemen. Really, uh, we're just worried about her. And uh, this baby here, y'all are going to take good care of it? Oh, Absolutely. And I'll just be like pointing towards that door that uh, Ollie went through, but like my <laughs> mouth is moving, but I'm relaying all this information. To... <laughs> <laughs> you guys are like the, the nobody knows how to deal with you guys in public. Cause on the one hand, we have this dude who just nays the horses for like half an hour on a carriage trip. And then on the other hand, this guy is just like miming at the thin air <laughs> while talking to us. <laughs> I guess maybe you can show me around the place and uh, show me what you got, kind of the business you got going on here. <laughs> Fred, what kind of question is this? <laughs> uh, yeah, Bray, I don't know if we have time for that. Oh, I guess you're right. Sorry. <laughs> can I buy you a drink? Maybe gonna, in I'm your gonna, downtime. I'm going to ask her, can I, can I buy you a drink sometime? Uh, sure, sure thing, I guess. Uh, thank you, sir. Yep. Very cool. Um, and then I put the bag of uh, coins back in my pocket. Okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> this whole time. Yeah. Nobody asks for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I keep thinking I, I let you guys roll with advantage on all your bribes and then no one takes money. <laughs> like, no one takes the bribe and then Soren gives them the money out of his kindness. Like, it's a totally broken system. <laughs> okay, I'm going to throw her the bag, but I'm going to slide a hand and make it a bag of flour. <laughs> okay. Jeez. Uh, roll slide a hand check. 17. Nice. Okay, so you, you switch it out and she says, hmm, these coins aren't so jingly, but it's got the weight of a coin pouch. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. And uh, really, if y'all, we just want to see Raya safe. So y'all do your best out there. And she, uh, she gets up and she leads you guys out of the, out of, uh, the brothel and into the street. Um, back to Oleander, who's in the basement still. <laughs> so is the window situation like one of those... Um... Those windows, oh, what are they called? Where they're dug out? Window well? Yeah. No, these are just stone wall rooms. Fuck yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know any of what just happened, essentially. You just got messaged. Yeah, no, yeah I used message. to message. Oh, right, right. Okay. Yeah. So you're up to date. So I guess I'll try to sneak back up to the third floor. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know all the same window I came in from. This is very good. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. 23 is still. Okay, so you open the door quietly, shut it behind you, and you manage to sneak your way back up the stairs to the uh, third floor. Can and I as you. That chick wrote in her journal? Uh, sure, yeah, it's, it's a few lines of poetry. Oh, stupid. Yeah. Wow, okay. No, oh, no respect for the arts. I wish She's a now. living person. She's putting her dreams and emotions on the paper. Come on. 
That's good. Okay. And uh, you enter into the room, and th in the same room that you left, there's a, a, a the woman you saw before with the black hair is standing cross armed, looking at the window, the open window, just kind of confused. And she, she says under her breath, I kind of swore that you were asshole. And she, she closes it and turns around. Um, you, uh -huh. <laughs> um, you're out in the hallway. What do you want to do? Uh, I'm going to go to a different door. <laughs> okay. I'm going to listen, make sure there's, I can't hear anybody in one of the working rooms. So you have time to listen and you don't, you don't hear anything in the, uh, one of these other working rooms. So you just, you open the door, head in and it's, it's totally empty. Just like the other one. Or, yep. I'm going to jump the fuck out of the window. Okay. So back down on the street, Soren and Bray have just stepped out. Lainey, who is the owner of the establishment, has given you the goodbye, closed it and bolted it behind you. And uh, you hear the soft thump, thump, uh, feet on the stones next to you as Ollie jumps out one of the third story windows. Hey, what up? Uh, I got a coin. What up? Oh, that was uh, cool. That was cool. the extent. That was the fruit of my labors. Was this coin, and I, and I, give it a little flip, flip, flip -a I got a date. Oh, flip -a Okay, well, like I, I cat catch it and uh, kind of turn it over, like Resident Evil style, to <laughs> kind of <laughs> check out that coin. Boom, yeah, my boom, point, boom. but yeah. Hey, this might be a good time to take a break. Cool. Okay, that's good with me. Yeah, I'm gonna go eat some bread. Let's take a three minute break. Um, sponsored by uh, Kirkland today, actually. Guys. Oh yeah, Kirkland. Okay. That's They're, our sponsor um, today, Kirkland Brand Nuts. Nuts. Oh. Extra oh, nuts. Fancy. Oh. I don't know if you can read that backwards or not. But um, excellent snack, guys. They've got these unsalted almonds. Mm, delicious. Sometimes Put those they don't closer to the screen so we can smell them. Smell o vision. Amazing. Mm, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they even come without the skins, if you're lucky, like this one. All right, I'm going to throw the Be Right Back screen up. Okay. <laughs>
strictly from the hair of a cheap scrotum. Mm, delicious. And we're back. <laughs> Thank goodness we missed that. <laughs> no, we caught that part. Yeah. <laughs> and with that, here we are, folks. <clears throat> All right. So, um, well, here's the deal. Uh, we're going to have a quick word from our sponsor as we're getting back into the action here. W would anyone like to give us a, would anyone like to tell us who's advertising for us this time? Yeah, it's sheep, sheep scrotum socks. Um, <laughs> Formerly are... sheep scrotum condoms. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but they figured out that they also work as socks. Yeah, they, but they're, they're supple, folks. They're strong, they're durable, and they're warm when wet. I mean, let's be let's get serious, folks. When you guys think about socks, what are you looking for? Supple. Uh, oh, supple. <laughs> you, want, you want very. I want a supple, supple sock that is long lasting. You want a, a long lasting, supple sock that's pleasurable for you as much as it is for your shoe. You want, <laughs> <laughs> you want it to go all day, going real smooth, and that's what you get with. Uh, yeah. What was the name of the sponsor again? Uh, sheep scrotum socks. Sheep scrotum socks. Uh, and that's, that's that's a triple S. Mm -hmm. and if, oh. uh, if you use the promo code three clerics, they will pre-shave <laughs> them for you. So you get, it just takes out the hassle of having to shave your own sheep scrotum <laughs> off of uh, the hair. They off do. Your they do offer unshaven for they, those that they prefer they that. Unshaven and shaven. They offer a variety of colors. Like white and off white, <laughs> and red, <laughs> pink rather, and uh, yeah. So we're thankful to Sheep Scrotum Socks for sponsoring this <laughs> episode. I know I enjoy my Sheep Scrotum Socks. Uh, I'm wearing three of them right now because you know they were formerly the condoms, and only two of them are are on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to get the cease and desist from like a real company that says <laughs> from actual <laughs> cheap scrotum socks that reaches out to us like guys not supple yeah. <laughs> and then we're gonna get that libel and slander case from uh, Rage Shadow Legends right after that <laughs> Whoa, wait a second. I thought we were shaved ladder shredgens or something oh, yeah shaved <laughs> shaved ladder <Rattle> legends <laughs> <laughs> I love shaved ladder legends <clears throat> Okay, team. So, uh, yeah, thanks for that word from our uh, sponsors. Just, just so you guys know, that ad caused us to lose all of our viewers. <laughs> <laughs> so good job, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> they actually all left? Yeah, they all left. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Their mom was probably in the room. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I wonder how many of those are people I knew. I mean, probably the majority of them were friends. I was like, hey, check out this cool show. <laughs> <laughs> so that's really funny. Okay. Um, all right. So, yeah, so you guys are you guys are in the street. It's about maybe like 10 in the morning right now. You guys just left Laney's Ladies and discovered a place in the Black Lake District where Freya, the mother – of this child would often visit. Um, do you guys? What do you guys want to do right now? Um. So, what are our leads here, boys? Uh, that one lead, that location in the Black Bank District, where she frequents. Mm -hmm. I got this coin. You know. Um. So that's cool. Yeah, I have hundreds of coins. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, what kind of coin is it? I don't know, man. It's got like two faces, and one's mad, one's sad. Can I roll some sort of check on this? Yeah, roll a religion yeah. check on this. Oh, damn. 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 Uh, That's a dirty 20. Jeez, man. Okay, so you recognize that this is the uh, symbol of whore, H-O-A-R. Hey, listen. 
<laughs> Wizards of the O A R. Don't <laughs> at me <laughs> at Wizards of the Coast. Okay. Just so we're clear, we found this in a brothel. Yeah. H O A R. Um, and um, listen, you talk to Gary Gygax about this, okay? <laughs> yeah, I'll cast speak with Deb. Yeah. Oh. Rest in peace, Gary. <clears throat> um. Okay, so yeah, so this is a yeah, this is a symbol of Hor. Hor is the god of vengeance, and um, yeah, the god of vengeance, and, and like adheres closely to this like eye for an eye, blood for blood kind of thing. Oh, I'm glad I stole this fucking coin. <laughs> god. Well, I mean, too late now, I guess. Yep. Can uh, so, can I can are you gonna use that coin for anything, or is it up for grabs? Oh, dude, I put in so much fucking work for this coin. <laughs> I'll buy it from you. I climbed like seven flights of stairs for this coin. Yeah, you really did. While <laughs> crouching. I'll buy it from you for three bags of flour. Mm. Have you seen what I can do with a bag of flour? I've seen what you can do with more than a bag of flour, and I'm not into it, bud. Uh, with a bag of flour and a baby. And a horse. And a horse. Yeah. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> um, okay, so let's just real quick, just uh, while we have time now, I want, so y'all should write these down. Uh, these three, um, the three things, like the words of aid that each of your gods gave you. Oh, I know mine. I wrote Dragon's down. Fury with peace, uh, fear the elf lord, and the third one I can't remember. Oh, I didn't good. write it down. Okay, yeah. cool. What does anyone know the third one? That was uh, Oleander's, right? So no, yeah. Ollie's Thorns. was meet the dragon's fury with peace unless you must do. Oh no, sorry. Bray's was meet the dragon's right. fury with peace unless you must do otherwise. Mine is I, the name of a woman. Yeah, this one says there will be one name you do not recognize. She hides within the key to his undoing. Oh my god. Okay. <clears throat> That. I'm gonna zoom chat that oh, God. business. Can you see my chat on the screen share? No. Nope. Oh, cool, cool. Okay, one sec. <clears throat> there will be one name you do not recognize. Colin, she hides within. To his undoing. Uh, okay, and then what was the other one? The last uh, one. What did you guys have for that? Fear the Elf Lord. Yes, uh, it was the. So the first part of that was vengeance comes for each of you, and then fear the Elf Lord. Whoa! 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 Vengeance. See him, son. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you yeah. said there was a cult. Someone did say something about that. Yes. Um, who who said something about that? Oh, that was Alfred. Oh, overheard that in the yeah, bar. Alfredo. Or Albert. Al what Albert. His, that's what it was. Not what Alfred. was his former name? Bartleby. Uh, B something. Yeah, Barn Barty's beers. Barnes and Nobles. Barnes and Nobles. <laughs> BB. <clears throat> All right, well, we're fucked, man. I don't know why I have this coin. All right, let's, uh, we gotta go to Blacklight, I think. Yep. To this address that this, uh, lady wrote down. Okay, cool. So, yeah, so you guys, uh, you guys have done a little bit of investigating at the coin, and you guys are now headed toward Black Lake District. Um, let me see here. Now, what do you think? That means a name you will you do not recognize, like in a different language, or uh, it probably could mean several things. Gee, the <laughs> fucking thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, divine, divine, uh, divine omens are mysterious and strange, and will probably make sense eventually. So. Yep. Yeah. Charles McFence when we're fucking dying. Have you tried Googling it? <laughs> yeah, can you give it a Goog, see if that does anything Who is for that? You? Google? Oh, he's a wizard. 
He's, mm. a, he's a wizard. He kind of knows everything. Oh, yeah. He's... Those guys owe us a favor. Mm. <laughs> well, they, yeah, there's the some wizards do. Okay. Anyway, so you guys, um, you guys head west towards the Black Lake District, and you go to the address that the lady gave you, that um, uh, Laney gave you, and you find the... Uh, so you, you come to this this house and it's just a house in the middle of the street. It's about 12 or it's about 11 in the afternoon now. There's this house in the middle of the street. It looks like any other. And in fact, there are people milling about in the street here in the Black Lake District. This one is is uh, inhabited by kind of a spillover. Like if we go to our map here, it's kind of a spillover from the Tower District like here into the, the Black Lake District. And so some Nashers and then some folk just who are trying to live their lives in peace in the kind of lower class part of town are here. And you see there is a man um, selling like cabbages and different vegetables out of a cart. And then a few people pass by, but <clears throat> many of them just kind of have their heads down in their cloaks to avoid uh, getting infected by anyone else here out on the streets. So yes, this man selling food is across the street from the house you guys are looking at. It looks just kind of like sagging and old and um, you don't see anything going on in any of the windows. It has two stories. What do you guys want to do? Uh, I'm going to walk over to the uh, old guy selling uh, food uh, and I'll hold out a, a dragon. Uh, good sir, uh, do you uh, sell your merchandise here often? Uh, he looks at you a little suspicious and hold on one sec. He looks at you a bit suspiciously. Uh, stop that. Thank you. <clears throat> he looks at you a bit suspiciously and then uh, he, he takes the dragon, eyes it in the sunlight, and then uh, pockets it and looks back up at you suspiciously. He's a, a an older halfling man. Yeah, I've, uh, I've been doing this for a while. Um, what was your question again? Sorry, it slipped my mind already. <laughs> I hand him a lozenge. <laughs> he popped it in his mouth. Thanks, Sonny. Uh, do you uh, sell your merchandise here uh, frequently? Frequently? I hardly know her. Uh, yeah, every day. <laughs> uh, so here it's, hustling. Uh, safe to say you uh, see the uh, comings and goings of uh, the people on the street here. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. They're, they're coming and going, yes. Uh, any people kind of jump out at you going, uh, going and coming from this location? I point to the address that uh, Laney gave us. Oh, sometimes when I play peekaboo with my grandson, he pops out at me. <laughs> but other than that, uh, some people have stood out, I suppose. Um, yeah, there's a, a couple fellas come in and out of the house every once in a while. Uh, they look, they look pretty normal, dressed in normal clothes and all that. I don't know what their job is, though. They come in and out at odd hours, and it's just a collection of guys. I don't know what kind of, like, guys' home it is, you know? Maybe it's college housing for one of the local maid schools, but I kind of doubt it. <clears throat> uh, any... Actively <laughs> afraid. Uh, any uh, markings? Uh, tattoos? Oh. Tattoos? Mm, no, I didn't see any tattoos on them. Uh oh. Mm. Can't say there was anything that stood out aside from the fact that it was strange there's a bunch of guys coming in and out of this house at all times in the day. <clears throat> uh, have you seen any of these uh, strange fellows go into this residence recently? Oh, sure. Yeah. Just this morning, even, I saw one go in. What about a strange lady and I hold the cabbages higher? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, what are you doing with the cabbages? <laughs> you know, holding it suggestively. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> like a strange cabbage breasted lady. Yeah. <laughs> Our next sponsor is Whole Foods, incidentally. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I haven't seen anything. Uh, oh well, now that you come to say it, uh, a couple months ago I did see one lady come in. Uh, she looked pretty pregnant, actually. Uh, but I don't know what she was doing there. Maybe one of maybe the kid's father lived there, but I don't know. I mean, these guys aren't the kind of responsible fellas to be good dads, you know. 
unlike you all. Now say, who's the father of that one? He points to, to baby Hanks. I mean, technically we're all the father. Oh, oh interesting. I've never heard of that before. Well, uh, anyway. <laughs> very progressive, huh? Uh, listen, I'm 300 years old, okay? <laughs> I'm a pretty conservative halfling. <laughs> So, uh, uh, so this uh, strange individual, he's still inside the residence? I think so. I haven't seen him go out since I've been standing here all morning. All right, and I'll tip my hat. Thank you, good sir. Thank you. And uh, would you be interested in any fruits or vegetables? Uh, not at this time. All right, I will just... you come back? Do you have any Built papayas? Oh, papayas? No, not this season. Sorry, sir. But I can uh, I can uh, make sure we get some if you ever want to come back. Uh, what about bananas? Oh, we got, yeah, I got one right here. He pulls it up and uh, he says, um, one copper piece for you. Uh, yeah, that sounds good. I take the banana. Okay. So. I'm just going to expense all of this. So. <clears throat> cool. R.I.P. Oleander? Yep. Yeah, well, I just totally spilled my drink on me, so mm. that's unfortunate. Unfortunate. Okay, so what do you guys want to do? Um, knock on this door, I guess. Okay, so you um, just just regular old nickety knack. Uh, a little bit of forceful. Oh, okay. <clears throat> nice. The cop knock, if you yeah. will. Yeah. That's, uh, how many stories is this building? This is a two-story, <laughs> two-story <laughs> building. You you watch it, Holly. Yeah. Uh, I look at Ollie and I and I say, "I'll give you a boost if you need it." <laughs> <laughs> Two feet off uh, the ground. Yeah. Seeing how well the last one went, I think I'll skip the. I'm almost five feet tall. Thank you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You're just a really long dwarf. Like someone just stretched your torso. <laughs> All of is kind of relative, huh? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so so Ollie is debatably climbing the the house, and uh, we there's like a firm thum thum thum, and then um, you just hear silence from inside. Um, I'll kick the door open. Okay, nice. All right, you kick the door open and um, roll a strength check for me. Oh boy, not as bad as I was hoping. Uh, Thirteen. Okay, the door just like collapses on its hinges and goes boom, flat into the ground. Uh, make a dexterity saving throw. Oh Jesus. Fourteen. Okay, so a crossbow, uh, like. From this, a crossbow bolt just shoots from the side, and you take a step back from it, and it uh, clings off the, the doorpost uh, from the inside. You look to the left, and there is like a, a rope tied to the top of the door, uh, so that if it if it's like opened, the the crossbow fires off. And uh, you're looking inside the house, and you don't see or hear anything. Hey, maybe I had the right idea. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to walk in and uh, let's see. Announce myself. We know you're in here. Uh, okay, so there is there is silence from silence for a moment, and then you just hear a muffled noise from up ahead. Well, come get us then. <laughs> well, mm. or from upstairs. Muffled Warm. noise. Silence. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking climb the window. Okay. <laughs> you thought the door trap was good. Just you wait for the window trap. Another a, mimic. <laughs> I'll give him a boost. Uh, okay, so you, with uh, with Bray's boost, you have advantage on this this climb, uh, either acrobatics or athletics roll. Well, that's good. One of them was a net two. Um, uh, nineteen. Cool. Okay. So, like before, you're able to get up, and uh, you're you're just barely hanging on to the sill of this window. Uh, you're looking with a nineteen. Uh, you are you are solidly hanging on to the the ledge of this window, <laughs> and um, you <laughs> you can see 
into a room that's just like it's totally empty and into a hallway and you see just like a little bit of movement in the hallway but that's it so the room is empty the room is like no it's nobody's moved in kind of thing like just like no bed no tables okay. that's it uh can i take a peek around the edges and like you know there's no uh wire or nothing yeah go ahead and roll me a perception no no cow drops on the inside of the the freaking window in the windowsill Ow. <laughs> you okay? perception uh that's a 26. okay yep so you you check and you make like it's very clear that there's no there's nothing nothing there also there's like a scream from below and someone when the door kicks open like people just kind of clear away from the building and um the guy selling cabbages just shakes his head and like picks up his cart and moves it a couple blocks down and like sets it back over there sick i'm gonna open the window and then uh, lower like like lower a rope down oh uh, nice okay so you uh, out of the window you mean mm -hmm. Okay, so you lower a rope down out of the window, and you're inside, uh, and Bray and Soren, you guys, so Soren, you're inside the house, you hear the of a rope dropping down, and Bray, you see it fall down in front of your face. Ollie, make a stealth roll for me. 26. 26, nice. Okay, so, yep, you, you hear, like, the muffled, like, a muffled shh from the hallway, and, like, a few people out there. But you don't, um, yeah, you don't, uh, no, no one seems to see you. I'm going to thaumaturgy my voice and say, give it up, we have you surrounded. Okay, make an intimidate check. I have rules. Uh, let's see. With advantage for thaumaturgy? Uh, at the same time, I'm going to message, I'm going to go in the front door and message uh, party saying, uh, let's corner him up, up top. I don't know why I'm just like the least intimidating dwarf, but <laughs> with it's advantage, a... I got an 11. Oh, boy. Nice. <laughs> uh, you hear silence. So this, this booming voice echoes through the house, and you hear silence uh, return back at you, but you do hear like the creak of something large and metal. Like a oh, sound. <clears throat> um, yep. All right, there you go. Still on uh, you, boys. Gonna pull out my shield, uh, my little dagger, okay. and start heading up the stairs. Okay. Where I heard these voices. I'm gonna pull out a bag of flour. <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna ready in action. Uh, if someone intends to do harm, I'm gonna attack. Okay. Sounds great. Ollie, what's your plan? I'm gonna shake the rope. Uh, okay. signal like some hey bud like let's I'm gonna like whisper down to Bray like you know like come on like let's go let's get up here okay I'm gonna climb up the rope okay so now two of you are inside this upper story and uh, Soren you are downstairs you hear Soren as you are walking up the stairs the click of someone readying a crossbow bolt everyone roll initiative yeah yeah 19. Oh, nice. Four. Does a 19 go fast? Does a 19 make me first? Uh, eight. High rollers. What did you have, Soren? Four. High rollers, indeed. <clears throat> okay. I have advantage on like a lot of the rolls I've had to do. So luckily, like, I've been rolling like nat fives and then like a 16 or whatever on like a different roll. <laughs> Fantastic. That's pretty slick. Okay, so we'll just do this, but you guys can imagine that you're inside. Um, <clears throat> where Where is my friend the text box? Aha, here we are. Okay, so first up, we have. Doo -doo 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 do. Oh, hold on. Sorry. Let me find the bookmark. A look, Mark. That sounds like a Star Wars Admiral. Admiral Look, Mark. It's a trap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I need one more. Ooh, tax documents. Let's do that. Okay, cool. So it looks like the bad boys are actually going to go first, unfortunately. What? 
Oh. Yep, they uh, rolled a dirty 19 plus Ooh. the modifier, so that's pretty slick. Okay, so bad yeah, boys. Nice. Um, and then after that is going to be Ali, and then we have Bray and our man Soren. Can you guys see that? Yep. Yeah. Yuck. Okay. Fred, can you get us our newly invented battle music? Oh, it's already on, baby. Fantastic. All right, team. So the bad boys go first from up. So let me just paint you the picture of this inside, Soren, what you see. So there's a hallway that goes back and um, these stairs, there's like a, looks pretty similar to the other house you guys were in. The, the stairs go up, but this time, instead of there like being an open loft uh, that like shows you the second floor, it's just a hallway that goes straight back and then around a corner, you see a dark figure about to fire a crossbow bolt at you from up there. Um, yep, okay. So a crossbow bolt, shoots out, oh, and uh, definitely is gonna miss. So it, it goes over your head and drrr, sticks in the wall behind you, Soren. Uh, at the same time, you see another figure uh, do the same thing behind him and or behind this other figure. So it's like one guy kneeling, one guy standing, yeah. and this other crossbow bolt strikes the floor next to you. Uh, while that's happening, you hear the loud shifting and clanging sound as something very, very similar to this rounds the corner. Uh, oh, my favorite. The downstairs. The Iron Giant? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a show sponsored by Disney, actually. <clears throat> okay. And he looks like some of the plate mail, though, is missing. So he's not quite as powerful as like a fully created one would be. Uh, but this one was scrapped together by whoever's keeping this house for protection. Thank you for telling us that. You didn't have to, but you did it anyway. That's right. That's why they rate me five stars on DM match. It's like oh. farmers only, DMs only, you know? Like families <laughs> only. Like families only, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, fantastic. So let's see here. <clears throat> yep, so it just comes like... Tush, tush around the corner and it looks like it's going to reach you on its next turn and it will it, if it comes around like you're kind of at the bottom uh, mm. you're you're on one of the you're on the flight of staircase going up it would be between you it would be, be between you on the stairs and the door uh, that's kind okay. of where it is right now and it'll be at you on the next turn okay uh, meanwhile the uh, last bad boy give me one moment here okay and uh yes yeah, so then this guy uh you hear a, a few words uttered under the breath of someone back behind uh him back behind these two crossbow guys in the front guy like this this purple light covers him and um he, he, he looks like like there's this magic barrier between him and the rest of the world uh that would bring us then to ollie who changed my name to old deander <laughs> god damn it anyways um so i'm gonna head out of the room how many um Real, real cry like also how many dudes you said there's the robot guy you said two crossbow uh oh geez <clears throat> sorry okay yes there's a robot guy and there's a robot guy downstairs you would just hear like the thong, thong, thong. Right, right, right. and uh you you look out into the hallway from the room that you and bray are in and you see one guy who has like a, a red cloak or like a like a red and purple cloak and he's standing behind this this hallway that leads down. He's standing there behind two guys with crossbows who just fired bolts down the stairs at someone coming. Okay, up. so we see like <clears throat> one guy and maybe two crossbows. Okay, um, I'm going to uh, sneak up behind this guy and fucking stab him right in the chest with my rapier. Okay, go for it. That is an attack roll. Do I have advantage on this attack? Um, since it is Snacky, yes, I would say he does not see you. <laughs> What'd you yeah, get? Like snake eyes? Oh boy. 
can you can can we please i don't know what the uh I don't know if you boys can see that or not. That's that line. looks like two ones. Those are uh, definitely two ones. Amazing. Well, <clears throat> your uh, your rapier, you thrust forward confidently, and it like goes over his shoulder into the wall and just sticks. And you have to like oh, come on and like rip it out. And uh, the three guys turn back and they're like, "Oh, intruders! Up upstairs!" Um, the oh. Bray, it is your turn. I've never rolled two fucking ones. <laughs> oh it's the God. first time for everything. Does a does a nat one hit? Uh, not not this time. No, mm-hmm. sorry. Also, like, the baby starts crying. So. You went in to stab him. You just gave him a little hug instead. And you're like, oh, buddy, come, it'll come be here. okay. <laughs> you don't have to do this anymore. You did say there was one close to a window, right? Oh. <laughs> uh, we'll say that there is a window in the back of the hallway that looks out into the alleyway behind the house. Yep. Okay, and we're two stories up? Yep, you guys are on the second floor. That ain't gonna do it. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Come to the roof, buddy. (laughs) So, um, I'm going to charge with my Warhammer um, at the guy that uh, Oleander just missed. Okay. I didn't miss. You missed a really bad one. <laughs> that wasn't one hundred percent my time. I should have should have had it. It didn't happen. They they had us in the first half, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> that's right, like one um, of my favorite memes 14 14 on this guy it does hit yep cool and it's but a one to... doesn't you fucking kidding me <laughs> <laughs> i know um, it's unfair that's eight bludgeoning Ooh, eight b damage baby okay so you let me see here nice all right I want to hit him in the back of the knee. Okay. <laughs> Do you bring your warhammer on the back of the knee? Ah! Oh! And he comes down to the ground on one knee and uh, looks looks up at you, and you, he just like shakes this pain off of his face and stands back up. But he looks like he's limping on that leg now, and if, if you've cracked it with your warhammer. And I, love I the... say to Oleander, that's how it's done. <laughs> I love how an overhand swing is a knee capper. Yeah, for Bray. Back of the, back of the <laughs> Okay, and uh, with Bray's turn, it is now Soren downstairs. All right, uh, I'm going to use my movement to get right up in this guy's face, this uh, okay. giant armored guy. Uh, and I'm going to attack him with my, uh, you know, my little dagger. Okay. Because why not? Wait, sorry, which guy did you say you were attacking? The metal guy. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, 16 to hit. Um, let's see. So, oh, I don't. Okay, yeah. So you, your dagger just kind of like bounces off the plate uh, of this guy's, uh, yeah, like the the metal plate on his chest. Okay. Uh, as I'm gonna use a bonus action to cast Shield of Faith on myself. Cool. Bumping me up to a 20 AC. Jeez, oh. I love that. That's amazing. <laughs> Cool. And uh, and then I'll say, uh, "Let's dance, big boy." Wow! And uh, he he like cocks his head, this like helmeted head at you. <laughs> oh, what about the baby? Uh, oh yeah, the baby is is definitely crying. Who is carrying the baby again? Is Soren? Soren. Yep. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Okay, yeah. So the baby is like, ah, ah, super, <laughs> super, uh, super sad. Let's get that percentage die going. Let There's it out, two. little one. <laughs> Oh wow, what a what a great time! Well, that's uh, definitely going to trigger us a little fire damage. So, um, yeah, uh, you you go ting and you hear like the baby going, ar, ar, and then you, you as this bolt of fire comes out and uh, strikes the the metal face of this creature. Um, 
cloth. Nice. Okay. It's and it does. Effective. What's that? Said it's super effective. Part of the part of the wood on the the shoulder of this construct like lights on fire and is now just burning next to its helmeted head because of the baby's uh, baby's attack. Let me see here one second. Let me do some quick head math. Maths. Maths. All right, that brings good. us. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> great work, baby and Soren. Okay, the bad boys are going. So this uh, this guy downstairs is not overwhelmingly happy to uh, with what you've done to it. So let's see. <clears throat> Wild Harvest Chapstick, everybody. <laughs> Take a bite for the audience. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. I'll tell you, it's coming out smooth. <laughs> <laughs> As we speak, oh my. Mm. Uh, does a nat 20 hit? Okay. <laughs> All right, great. Does a so... nat 20 hit? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jonathan, see you how you've corrupted this group. Yeah. <laughs> that always you. This is all you. This is not all me. Uh, so he, he pulls back his arm and uh, just slams you right in the chest with his fist. Um, you you feel just like it starts to bruise and there's a crack in one of your ribs um, and you take 11 damage. Ooh. That's some serious shit. We're in, we're in the shit now, boys. <laughs> You were always in it to begin with. <laughs> Just a PSA from the DM. <laughs> All right. Uh, that is the first of the bad boys. Next, back up the stairs. Uh, this other guy takes another shot at Soren as he just gets cracked by that guy. Uh, that is going to be a... A uh, 14 to hit is not going to do it on your 20 uh, AC. Wow, My goodness. Wow. Um, yep, okay, so the arrow just clings off your armor, like strikes the shield of faith and then falls to the ground. And the guy behind him turns around, shifts back in the hallway and fires over this other guy's uh, shoulder at Bray. And it like he was aiming at Bray because he thought Bray was like a normal sized human. And so he just fires over his head and like if Bray was a human, it would have struck him in the chest, but instead it just goes like two feet over the top of Bray's head and thuds against a door back in the hallway. Dude, he's got thug intelligence. Like, what are you gonna do, you know? I'm like almost five feet tall. <laughs> you also shot that crossbow sideways. <laughs> <laughs> it just looks so cool. <laughs> yeah so okay so it, it like bounces off the top of your helmet i'm sorry i'm using a you know token dwarf stereotypes okay and the last guy he turns to ollie and he like grabs your wrist oh, and yeah. tries to grab your wrist yeah. as you pull your <laughs> you pull your hand back <laughs> well the dice will decide Oh, that's another nat 20, my goodness. Oh. Whoa, 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 is this a grapple check? This is not a grapple check, thank goodness. It's only an inflict wounds check. Oh, um, oh ow. Inflict wounds. This is gonna hurt. Mm. I mean, not really, it's just... Oh, geez, 3d10. <laughs> Bye, Bye, Ollie. <laughs> Triple uh. tens. <laughs> The reaction I, re I cast, resist and flick wounds. <laughs> <laughs> this actually may down you. If he does double damage, he gets to roll a dice twice. Ooh. Oh. And I'm in a hallway <laughs> with a construct. <laughs> oh no. He does 32 damage. Fuck <laughs> off, oh, oh, I'm down. Oh, oh okay. So oh, he grabs your God. wrist and um, you feel you feel this just like death energy shoot through you. Um, your your arm like begins oh, to shrivel and uh, you, it like grows old and wrinkles a bit and you just like fall to the ground unconscious. Welcome to two clerics and a baby. <laughs> <laughs> the hit D&D &D show. 
<laughs> rated meh by critics all around the world. Well, that's that's, <laughs> that's sick. Solid, uh, the D and D Beyond, when you go uh, zero hit points, it pulls up your death saves. Oh, that's nice. It's better than just like deleting your character. Sheet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that is that for the bad boys and Ollie. Speaking of death saves. Oh fuck. Oh yeah! Wow. Seventeen. Nice. That's a success. All right, Bray, it's your go. Uh, I'm going to cast Inflict Wounds on that guy. Okay, go for it. <laughs> so, be an app. Um, so it's a melee attack. Okay. Right. Yep, yeah, melee okay. attack for the 3d10. 15? Yeah, that'll hit, yep. Okay, and it is... 19 damage. Wow, that is... Okay, yeah, so you do 19 damage. And oh, as gosh. a bonus action, I want to cast uh, Healing Word on the boy. Freaking blast this fool. And Which of your boys? Uh, my floor boy. Floor boy, nice. <laughs> okay, Does is he conscious when he goes back up over... Oh, well, he wouldn't go over zero hit points with that, would he? Yeah, because you start at zero. Oh, cool. Yeah, so he immediately, like, regains consciousness, and then he's just on the ground. Cool. So that is uh, six points of health. Oh, boy. You. Okay. So he, um... So, yeah, like, you you strike with, with one word. You heal... Ollie, and then you slap a hand on the chest of this guy, and uh, he's got this leather armor underneath his robe, but it still isn't enough to stop this energy from going through your hand, and uh, you see just like he suddenly bags appear under his eyes and his face wrinkles, and he, he like tries to shake it off, but he looks uh, he definitely looks damaged by the spell. Um, then that takes us to Soren. What is All right. What is the uh, so for my action, I'm going to expend the use of a healer's kit on myself. Okay. Does that uh, trigger an A of op? No. Cool. Just I'm not. Yeah, I'm just. I'm not moving. I'm just chilling where I'm at. Cool. And then for my bonus action, I'm gonna cast Healing Word on Ollie. Nice. And uh, that is gonna be twelve points of HP back to you. Oh yeah. How the fuck does your Healing Word get um... life? No. Yeah, life clear. So I get a bonus uh, three to every health mm. healing thing, plus my five, plus I rolled a four on my D4. Dang, I'm yeah. probably feeling pretty good right now. I'm almost back up to full. Do you? <laughs> All right, that is my action. My turn. That's that's how you get spoiled in a party full of clerics. Is just be the first one to take a ton of damage, and everyone's like, "All right, buddy." <laughs> <laughs> bonus action is ridiculous. Well, that's yeah, pretty strong. Yeah. Well, okay. We need it though. <laughs> yeah, you guys do need it because it is now back to the bad boys. So, the oh gosh, this guy has a multi attack. Uh, well, we just won't do that. Fuck that. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I mean, he is challenge rating way above what you guys are at. So, anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so this guy uh, takes just opens his palm. This giant metal guy opens his palm and just goes to slap Soren with it. Um, guys, I really wish I was kidding, but that's another nat 20. Oh my god. Ah! <laughs> you need to change those dice. I am glad I healed him. Yep, okay. So, uh, that's another... What is he doing here? 2d6? Yep. 2d6 plus 2. Oh, wait, oh. the baby didn't go. Oh, yeah. Oh, the baby didn't go. So All go, right, baby, right. go. The baby is still crying. Where? 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 Where is my other percentage die, baby? What did you do with it? You're going to have oh. to re-roll the bad boys' rolls and everything. It's crazy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> good meme. Good meme. Uh, okay, yeah, so the baby is just like... <laughs> so runs back and uh, doesn't do anything this turn. Um, also, take nine damage. Nine. Nine. Uh, from back up in the hallway, this guy's like, oh, I get a stupid crossbow. Pulls back one more bolt and fires it at you. Still sideways. Still sideways. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, that one, like, clinks off of a window in the hallway. And he's like, can't get this to hit anything. <laughs> the other guy, um, he, 
fires a crossbow uh, this time at Bray. Ooh, and that is going to be a hit, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a. Uh, woo. Uh, sorry. Um, <laughs> the 21, dirty 21. That's gonna um, do it. And you will take four damage from that. Oh boy. Yep. Okay, so yeah, you um you you try to dodge at the last second, but it's it just like scrapes your neck uh, mm -hmm. and goes back into the hallway. Then that brings us finally back to this guy who just inflicted wounds, Ollie. And Ollie is uh, are you prone now, Ollie? You're still prone, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so he turns, not realizing that Ollie is back up to Bray, and um, he begins to cast, well, yeah, so he casts a spell, and let's see. I tell him he sucks. Oh, he doesn't cast a spell anymore, because he's sad. Savage. He casts Conjure Horse. <laughs> that's, a, that's a spell, actually. Bray has been incapacitated. <laughs> um, no, he, so he he says a few words, and, and a, a floating sword appears behind you. It looks like it's it's like a ghostly floating sword uh, behind you, Bray. And let's see. That's an action, right? That is an action. Oh gosh, that's terrible. Um. So I'm going to say an 8 is not going to hit you, Bray? You're going to... Yeah, that's right. Great. Okay. Well, there we go. Yeah, so let's see... Oh my gosh, this is awesome. All right. Yep. So that it appears behind you. And you're like, what the heck? And it goes... Whoosh, like comes down and you just block it off with your with your, your war hammer. And the sword whoosh, like begins to float around in the air above you. That brings us back then to Ollie. All right. I'm going to get up on my feet. Good old two feet. And uh, uh, scoot around this guy, like pivot around him, make a make a sandwich with uh, with Bray. Okay, so good. Uh, just n so you know, though, now it's like a it's a weird double decker. So it's like crossbow guy, you spellcaster guy, Bray, floating sword. Oh yeah, this that's I mean that's so a, you get advantage, but they get advantage. Yeah, so the hearty meat full. Um, I'm gonna Bray, is, Bray claps his head. He's like, "That's what I was trying to invent back in the tower." <laughs> of course. <laughs> I'm going to um, I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna use uh, inflict wounds on this guy. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Advantage. Uh, oh, nineteen plus. Oh, that's six, a hit. Sure. Five. Where's my D tenors? Oh, there's one. Oh, I hated that. Thanks. <laughs> um, there we I go. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> this joke sponsored by choir class. <laughs> Twenty six damage. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Jeez. So uh, yeah, the this um, I he did you get up to do this? Yeah, I freaking squeeze his neck. <laughs> okay, wow. <laughs> so you stand up and you you grab onto his neck and um, you like his eyes just go hollow and he has this like shocked look on his face as he falls to the ground. Did. Yeah. Got him. Yeah. Okay, so that is it for that guy. Um, anything else you want to do on your turn, Ollie? How are you two looking health wise? Uh, I'm like, I feel like a 13 out of 24. If I had to say, I'd probably say 28 out of 32. I'm going to bonus action healing word uh, uh, sword there. I don't ever use a d4. Um, that is 7. You heal for 7. Yeah, much appreciated. Um, Bray and Ollie, make a perception check for me. You're making me a perception check, dude? Uh-oh. Ridiculous. 16. And... Oh, guess what? 27. Do -do -do. Do -do 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 okay, so you, um, you, as the spellcaster falls to the ground, you see a, um, like an amulet pops out of his, his armor and just, like, 
claws on like on it splayed out on the ground next to him, just just kind of poking out of his robes on the floor. So match that shit. Okay, My hand's uh, already around his fucking neck. <laughs> <laughs> you can snatch it on, on the next turn. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay. So Bray, did you did you go Bray? No, I haven't done yet. Okay, that would be your go. Okay, so what I'm going right. to do with my turn is I'm going to uh, grapple the crossbow guy. Okay. And um, Make, uh, well, let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna choose in that case which one is better for him. I think Dex. Ooh, it do be. Okay. Eleven. Eighteen. Oh yeah, you grab yeah. one. Uh, is that sword gone now? That he the dead? sword is gone. Yep. That's yeah. uh, oh. just two uh, two crossbow guys up in the hallway there. Um, a couple of fruit bucks. So I'm gonna. T- <laughs> 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 I'm gonna try to throw him down the stairs. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's okay. uh. Strength check, I suppose. How's a twenty-one feel? Oh, uh, that throws him pretty good. Uh, um, okay, <laughs> roll a d6 for damage as he falls down the stairs. That's a six. Oh gosh, max damage on the stairs Does throw. Does he fall on the metal bo- on the on the boy? No, he would tumble. So he like down the stairs, and he he just kind of collapses on the floor at Soren's feet. So, uh, <laughs> so there you go. He's oh, now two boys at him. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, also, um, Soren, how are you looking, bud? Help us. Good. Alander just uh, healed me up. Okay, so I'm gonna use the uh, rest of my move action to follow the guy that I just threw. He did six damage. That's so much damage to this guy. Okay, you guys, uh, you you fall him down the stairs. You're able to make it down the rest of the way. So it's like you, and then this guy on the ground, and then Soren, and then just at the bottom of the staircase is this uh, giant metal construct thing. Okay. Wait, I thought the giant construct came from the hallway. Oh no, sorry. The giant the giant construct came from below the stairs. Oh, okay. Out from the yeah middle of the house. Yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. Doesn't change that much, I guess. Not really. Yeah. No. Okay, cool. And then Soren, that does bring us to you. All right, I'm going to uh, cast Inflict Wounds on this guy, and I'm going to expend my Inspiration Point to nice. <laughs> roll with advantage. Oh, much better. Uh, it's going to be like 21 to hit. Uh, yes, that'll definitely. Okay. 21 hit. <laughs> I needed that. Uh, okay, not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, a 20. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you like this guy gets as end of Indiana Jones as anyone's ever been, just as much as Bray was at the beginning of the episode. So he just curls up and oh, locks and it's gone. And um, yeah, nice. Any Anything else on your turn, Soren? That was the construct. Oh, that was the construct. Yeah, My not the, I the guy it. on the ground. No, no, no. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, no, no. no. The floor just fucking <laughs> choke him. <laughs> that poor guy. <laughs> His last moments were dwarf picks me up and just throws me downstairs. <laughs> and this guy <laughs> mercs me at the bottom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, no, okay. So your, yeah, your hit still hits. I'm checking his immunities. Um... Okay, no immunity to necrotic damage. How much was it again? 20, you 20, said? yep. Nice. Okay, yeah, so the um, this energy flows through and like the magic that's holding it together like briefly stops and you can see the, the plates of its armor and the wood kind of just like fall down for a second and then it like pulls itself back together, this giant Megatron-like thing. And that brings us to- the Baby. Yes, the baby. How could I forget? Let me add that. Let me add this little homie in. The baby. Little Hanks, please. <laughs> hey, Hanks. Call me by my little Hanks. Hanks. Yeah, the baby is my slave name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. Uh, 
right, if it's gonna be offset, let's just really offset yeah. it. There we go. Yeah. But it has to overlap a little bit. Oh, that's super unappealing. <laughs> that visually. was the, uh, what is that, acronym Bob that we had going on. Oh, it was Bob's, now it's Bobzel. Bobzel. <laughs> uh, okay, little Hanks. He is crying away on your shoulder. And there's faint chanting from the crowd far away. Lil Hanks, Lil Hanks. Uh, but the crowd chanting did no effect, and he's still rrr, rrr, um, really scared and just kind of freaked out by all the energy, the frenetic energy going on here. And uh, with that, the bad boys are back at it. So this one on the ground, he pulls a long sword out of his uh, out of his belt and slashes at your ankles, Soren. Um, does a 16 hit? No, it does no. not. 20 AC. Gosh. Okay. And back up on the top of the stairs, this other guy um, turns to Bray and does the same thing. He takes a long sword out and slashes at you. And that is a six for sure going to miss. Meanwhile, back down the stairs, as he clangs his sword down on your armor, the construct thrusts a fist at... Um, at Soren's legs and a 24. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> At least it wasn't a natural 20. Yeah, natural 19. You got to watch out for this. Nice. And you'll take 11 damage from that. Okay. Okay. That is the bad boys in all their glory. Ollie, it's your turn. Right. Yeah, I'm going um, to bound down the stairs at uh, the boy who got thrown down the stairs. Okay, so just so you know, if you are going down the stairs without a disengage, you will get attack of opportunity by the guy that's fighting Bray. Oh, shit. Okay. That's my beat. Um, I want to sandwich homeboy then. Okay. And uh, give him the old uh, stab right in the right in the back. Alright, sounds good. Net 20, baby. Oof. This guy's toast. Righty. That's <laughs> 10 plus, what do I add to my rapier? 14 plus 8 for 22. Wow, that's, yep. So this, you're just, you pierce the armor and and then pull it back out. And just with one swift motion, he falls to the ground. So that was with sneak attack as well? Yeah, don't you? Because we roll double damage sneak attack too. If I crit, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Sick. Yeah. Sure. Yes, yeah, so you don't actually need advantage. Apparently, you just have to have another enemy within five right. feet of them. That would like break. I just wanted the advantage. <laughs> <laughs> and it got me the crit. It's such a broken mechanic. I remember playing. I think the first class I played in fifth edition was a rogue, and sneak attack is just strong. I mean, if you're not sneak attacking every round, you are doing it wrong. Yep. Yeah. yeah. The sneak attack, since, I mean, technically, like, so, uh, inflict wounds is a melee attack spell. Mm hmm. If I melee somebody with my rapier, I think it has to be your hands, like a touch spell. Oh. You can't change Yeah, the attack weapon. must use a finesse or ranged weapon. Yeah, but it's a melee. Spell it. It's not finesse though. <laughs> I channel that shit through my rapier. <laughs> uh, that's good. Yeah, you could your finesse weapon could just be like like a hand with like a karate chop. Yeah, like, just on, the, on, the, on the end of a wood stick. And you're just, yeah, that's good. Okay. My hands are registered, registered deadly weapons. <laughs> Is your name Chad also? Yeah, Sensei Chad. Sensei Chad. Oh, you're Sensei Chad. I've actually heard a lot about that guy. Sensei Chad's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so Bray, that takes us to you. I want to take out this guy that is... Uh, is he still prone when he attacks Soren, or is he... Yeah, he was just going at his ankles. Okay, great. So not only is he sandwiched, but he's also prone, which gives me double advantage, is that right? It gives you <laughs> normal advantage. Woo! So I'm going to uh, Warhammer his sword hand. R.I.P. Okay. So first roll was a 25. 
Careful rolls of 15. I also haven't done a crit. Mm. That is a dirty 25. Okay, dirty 25 will hit on this one. Okay. So non lethal it's... hand shattering. <laughs> uh, 11 damage. Okay, wow. The, are you doing lethal or non lethal? Uh, non lethal. Okay, so yeah, you do like you break his hand, and he he cries out and drops his sword, and then just just goes unconscious. Nice. So there you go. Okay, um, and in that, oh sorry, go ahead, Bray. I'm uh, want to use the rest of my action to get up on the railing of uh, where I'm at. Um. Are you gonna freaking people's elbow this guy? <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, you can climb up onto the railing, no problem. Okay, okay cool. smell what the Bray is cooking. <laughs> <laughs> can you smell what the Bray is cooking? Let's get in his face. <laughs> <laughs> if the Bray is gonna come, Shield Guardian's coming at me, it's double, triple time, smackdown. I got one thing to say to him, and he takes the reporter's mic. He's like, the Bray's coming for you, brother. <laughs> From the top of the ring. <laughs> watch out, watch out, watch out. Bray's intro music is just drum fills. He's coming out. He's going to RKO this guy off the top of the fucking. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, so you're you're balancing yourself on the. Um, I'll say that takes takes your move action to get there, and then your action to like get ready for your next attack. Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. Actually, wait. Did you you moved and then hit the guy on your? No, well, he hit the guy. Yeah. Oh, okay, but you already down there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. So then your move action can be to balance up on the stair banister. Cool. Okay. Okay, uh, Soren, your go. Uh, using a healer's kit. Yeehaw. Because I need it. All right, get back to nine. And then I'm going to expand my final spell slot to cast Inflict Wounds. We stand. That is a 19. Uh, that'll definitely, yep, that hits. All right. Much better. 22. 22. Okay, wow. Jeez. That's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. All right. So Sunday. You... Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you spend your last inflict wounds on this creature and it, it like steps stumbles back and you can see the wood that makes up its frame rotting and the metal like twisting in on itself with this loud creaking sound and it just sets its head back on its uh, shoulders shakes it off and comes at you once more uh, meanwhile Lil Hanks after seeing its uh, role model and one of its three dads Bray getting up on the banisters uh, just continues to cry unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> Really, Continue really, yeah. you fucking baby. <laughs> <laughs> Little Hanks was such a baller last game. Like, yeah. he contributed so much. The Hanks giveth, the Hanks I taketh ha- away. <laughs> <laughs> I have no way to show solidarity with this baby this time. <laughs> yeah. You're, there's no more, like, dancing. You, like, you can't do any more of that. Weren't yeah. you feeding him pepper? <laughs> I was trying to get food, yeah. Not necessarily feeding, but forcing up its nose <laughs> oh man <laughs> kind of bad dad moves but that's totally okay <laughs> at least you're not throwing any bags of flour around you know yeah. <laughs> all right so that does bring us to the bad boys there's just one bad boy left in the game and that is our our man the shield guardian so uh his first attack at um soren he, he uh, winds up a punch and it whips past you, and then he, as he does, he swings another punch, this time at Bray. Ooh, and that one whoof, whiffs right past you as well. And, and he steps back. No, no, not Baby Hanks. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Uh, plot armor. Yeah, Baby Hanks has the most, every DM power that I have, I mm. give to Baby Hanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and that takes us down to Ollie. All right. Um, 
I want to, I want to try to get the baby to, uh, you know, I'm going to cast Sacred Flame to maybe kind of spark something with this baby. <laughs> uh, so, can this, uh, this, this robot here make a deck save? Ooh, robot deck save. Ooh, minus one, folks. Ooh, that's an eight. No, that is a spell. That is max damage eight. <laughs> How much and is max? And, I, and I, as I'm doing that, I look at the baby and do the. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the good times, baby. Come oh. on. Okay. How much damage was that again? Eight. Eight. Okay. Okay. So this this sacred flame <sighs> lights upon the shield guardian, and the the fire just blasts through all of its like uh its its metal frame, and you see there's this like singeing and cooking sound as the fire that was on his shoulder from the baby's sneeze now extends to all over his wooden body. Can I say uh, the, uh, the, the verbal component was a sneeze? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, what, what did we have? Oh, yeah. Um, Soren, the somatic component for wit for message earlier was finger guns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't even know what our verbal or somatic component would be for your individual thaumaturgies, but probably something baller. <laughs> Bitch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's make that cannon. <laughs> so just every time like a rust monster was getting slammed, like every six seconds. <laughs> okay. Uh, Bray, it is your turn. It really, it's like a three pock video. <laughs> yeah, it's like a three pock video. <laughs> Doors so, be opening and closing all over the place, you know? Would a, um, Huracan Rana be an acrobatics or an athletics check? What the actually... fuck are you talking about? <laughs> that's, that's my question. <laughs> okay, so I'm like... I'm about to do this. What, repeat it. Uh, Huracan Rana? Hurricane coronavirus. So essentially, I'm going to like jump up on him <laughs> with my legs around his head and throw my body back. So like oh, my Jesus. legs. Hey, Ray, but <laughs> 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 so then, like, I throw myself back. So like, my legs carry his. Head to the ground. Okay. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> can can somebody fully work like the best wrestling music you can think of for me while Bray is doing this? Uh, what kind of music? Do you do? Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Roll it up, Bray. That's a strength check. Strength. That is a crit. Oh baby. Oh. <laughs> Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> okay, uh, roll that max damage, or the double damage, or whatever it is. What do we say? Was a D six? Yes. Oh, for this, uh, we can make this one a D eight for this attack. Oh, great! So fourteen. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and the idea is that my legs whip him down so his head crashes on the ground. Well, there it is, folks. Um, you 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 wrap your legs around his head and you pull him down onto the ground and just, <sighs> there's this loud crash and you like you slide backwards as you now realize that your arms and legs are wrapped around the helmet of the shield guardian and you just kind of like slide and thunk up against a wall and then you let go of it and his body is just lifeless and still on the ground. Can I retcon and say that before I jumped? I said, "Oh yeah." <laughs> yeah, <absolutely. laughs> macho macho man my mouth is fully a gate <laughs> oh, baby stops crying immediately <laughs> like I just stop mid dance <laughs> are we out of initiative you guys are out of initiative well done so the three bodies of these people lie on the floor um and the yeah the shield guardian headless is now on the ground in the front area uh right on top of this door that's been kicked open and all of this was just like everyone outside if anyone was outside could have heard all of this as it was going down <laughs> <laughs> should have sold tickets 
Yeah. <laughs> Can I inspect this amulet? Yeah, so the amulet is the amulet of the Shield Guardian's master. Oh, fucking awesome. Um, uh, however, make an appraise check. Oh, this is in third edition. Um, oh, gosh, what would even that be? Intelligence. Yeah, just, just give me a flat intelligence. Hey, bud. <laughs> <laughs> How does a one treat? So oh, jeez! <laughs> hmm. like, ooh, shiny! <laughs> this amulet is made of amulet. It's <laughs> dirty too. Uh, okay. Right, uh, so... Yeah, you, you have no idea. You're like, this could be anywhere from one copper to a hundred gold. And I fuck uh, and I chug it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll catch it and uh, it rolls well. Okay, go ahead. Just straight intelligence. Yeah, just straight intelligence. Ah, uh, seventeen. Nice. Okay, yeah. So you, uh, you know that crafting it, its components take uh, about a thousand gold piece to to make. What the fuck? Um, Ollie, go ahead and give yourself an inspiration for really playing into the uh, the low intelligence checks right. there. <laughs> so this is like it controls the shield guardian. It does. Yeah, it controls it. The shield guardian, yep. Uh, does it look like it's still intact? Um, the the shield guardian or the amulet? The amulet. Yeah, the amulet is still totally intact. Yep. Uh, so I'm gonna put the amulet on. Okay. And cast hey, mending. It's worth. It's worthless. What are you doing? Go ahead. Go cast ahead. mending on the uh, shield guardian. What does the uh, text of mending say? Uh, the spell requires a single break or tear in an object touch so such as a broken chain link essentially uh so like third level uh uh art artificer i also get a construct but uh, uh it allows me to cast mending to heal constructs that's right no homunculus yep yeah <clears throat> okay well uh you put the head back on and like <laughs> cauterize it <laughs> or solder it back on Must and uh, tools. Yeah. the the shield guardian just like gets back up into a sitting position barely put together and then looks up at you its new master that you've given me an excuse to make all of our combat way harder now but cheers you guys have a shield guardian now i got a crazy idea put the can uh, we get this thing to hold the baby like, like i want like a mech suit idea. like it's like a little uh, <laughs> like crane <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like there's a baby just right there. A fireplace yeah. that baby belly. That to Rick and Morty when the dog. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll say that taking if you take it back and do a couple days of metal, like at least a day of metal working on it, you'd be able to fashion this and do a pretty cool baby yep. carrier. All right. Nice. So you guys. Um, yeah, the, the rest of the house is free for you guys to search. We're gonna. I'm gonna yell. Uh, what, what was her name? Horror? Higher? Rhea. 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 H R. Uh, okay, you yell out this name a couple times, but you hear no response. I'm gonna uh, cast uh, spare the dying. Is what it's called. Oh yep. Can't um, trip. Yep. Well, isn't he just unconscious? Yeah, he's he's just unconscious. The guy who's not dying. Broken. Yeah. But if yeah, you touch a living creature that has hit zero points, he's stable. He so, would... yeah, when you Goodness. like, oh yeah. Uh, so when you do non-lethal damage and bring them to zero, they just go unconscious, but they don't die. They're stable. Oh, he's stable already. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So um, I'm gonna pour a little bit of water on his face <laughs> and uh, see if I can get him to wake up. Okay, so and by water you mean pee, yes. <laughs> Urine. Ha ha ha. Good old people water. <laughs> okay, so you uh, splash some water on his face, he wakes up uh, and be, yeah, holds his broken hand to his chest. Who, who are you? What do you want with us? Uh we'll ask the questions around here, bud. <laughs> He just quietly uh, sits up against the wall. Give him a wink. <laughs> <laughs> Directly into the camera. Yeah. 
and uh, and say, uh, "Where's Kreia?" Um, he he looks confused. Kreia, why do you want why do you want her? Uh, you talking about the woman? Yep. Um, well, yep, the lady Kreia. Where is she? She owes me money. Why does it matter? <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. She, she hasn't been in for. She, she just comes and visits every once in a while. She just needs a place to stay right now. Uh, but I don't know where she is. She pops in and out. I'm gonna insight check him. Okay. Ooh, nat twenty. So that's uh, gonna be a solid twenty-five. He is telling the truth on that one. <sighs> Checks in for what? What do you think, Soren? Uh, I think you should get a bag of flour out. Mm, make them eat the flour, right? <laughs> no, I pull out a torch. <laughs> just get ready to light it. Mm, I see. Um, listen, Somebody's buddy, birthday. We need some information here, and we can do this the easy way or the hard way. And I start sprinkling a little flour on top of him. <laughs> he, he stifles a laugh, but then he says, uh, I, I don't know what you're doing, but um, listen, I, I'll tell you anything. I, I'm telling you the truth. I'll tell you anything you want to know. Uh, what are you guys doing here? I don't know a lot. I, you know, it comes from the top down. I'm just one of the, just one of the, the lackeys, you know? I, uh, listen, man. I think the world really needs to be more ordered. Uh, so many people get away with so much stuff and justice is just, it's weak. It's weak around these parts. Uh, so what we do is we, you bring your request to us and we take vengeance. Uh, you tell us what to do. We go take the eye for the eye. We are the hand of whore. I flip my coin. He looks up at you as you flip it. I see you've got the mark of whore there. Are you followers? I've uh, I've studied a horror or two. <laughs> uh, Horse, you can't forget the yeah. S. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what was it again? Never mind. I haven't. No. Yeah, uh, we uh, we're from the uh, water deep sect. We're just sucked out in water deep. I had no I had no idea. The tippy top, the tip, tip top, the tippy top of the tippy spear. Oh, I don't even know who the tip of the top is. <laughs> I just follow orders. <laughs> a guy named Bill. <laughs> so why would you come in and and kill me? And you're looking for Hraya? Yeah, it's weird. It's a it's an eye for an eye for an eye situation. You know, like <laughs> it's a weird loop where you know you guys did this, and then somebody came to us to come to you. And it's it's gonna just end up being a vicious cycle if you don't, you know. Yeah, our our orders supersede your orders. This sounds like someone's making a persuade roll with uh with advantage here. <laughs> oh, oh god! Oh, god. <laughs> it's, it's it's a twelve. Okay, I hate that. Oh, I have my fucking minus one. I I this is, that's ridiculous. <laughs> there's no there's no water deep. Section, I'm come gonna, on. I'm gonna push my you are just a lackey. You, have, you don't even know this. Yeah. Wait. What? What did you say, Bray? I'm gonna push my thumb into one of his wounds. Ooh. Oh. All right. He, ah, cries out in pain. Uh, I listen. I don't. I don't know anything else. I'm telling you guys. I'm telling you guys what I know. What? What? What, what is it you're asking? What's even the question who's at this your point? Who's your boss? Yeah. Who's, who's your boss? head man? You you killed him. He's right up the stairs there. He's the one who had the amulet. Who's He's the one boss? I got everything from. <laughs> Who's his boss? <laughs> Wait, I don't know who his boss is. We it it's it stays real quiet. It stays real quiet. They don't like any information to get out. First off, we didn't kill him, so let's not put that out there. That was <laughs> died of his own. That's what we call a suicide by cop. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. He uh, he attacked uh, a deputy officer of the law, of, and of uh, we were just trying to come and hang out and see what was up, and you guys just started attacking us. You guys kicked down the door without a <laughs> warrant, okay? <laughs> so, hey, horror is my warrant. 
<laughs> we had a probable cause. We knocked on the door. We, we, uh, you know, and with that, we heard weapons being fired in here, and uh, <laughs> we had to come in here and, and see what was going on. So don't give me yeah. this. We started murdering people. Listen, man, you're a cop. I can't talk. To, you can't make me talk legally. <laughs> I don't see the paperwork. You can't search my car. <laughs> We could do this the easy way, or we could do it the hard way, bud. Uh, I, I'm seriously telling you guys everything I know. Uh, if you want to find out more, we've got a headquarters somewhere in this city, but that I honestly don't even know. Okay, so who's your boss? <laughs> I'm telling you, the guy upstairs is your boss. Who's his boss? I don't know. They don't tell us that information. All right, how, how do we get to this headquarters, then? He sighs. <sighs> I trust that they will take care of you. And actually, well, if there isn't already a, a hit out on you, well, there will be soon enough. So I'll tell you, and you'll get you'll get killed before you you find out. I see them coming from the the east. Sometimes even, uh, well, people have come from over the bridge to the south, as well as from the river river district. So I don't exactly know from the south, from the east. He laughs, perhaps even from the chasm. Maybe they'd be powerful enough to be in that section of the city. I don't know, he says. And uh, you really think that your people can kill us? Uh, he laughs again and he says, the kind of fight that you had here is nothing compared to everything that we've got. We are the people that your people send for the big people. <laughs> that was very well put, Ollie. Thank oh, you. Are we so all check with disadvantage? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. Fuck, disadvantage. Oh, God. God damn it. Oh. So that's a 10. Okay. Uh, I, I guess. Well, that's great. Listen. <laughs> the if, one if... persuade roll I have, and I actually roll good. And uh, you got the disad. Yep. Uh, and if if that's the case if you're the ones from the, up on the top then I know people just as powerful as you and the cycle will continue as long as justice is done and justice being vengeance blood for blood then I'm happy we've won if that's the case uh, and I pause for a moment I think justice is going to turn a blind eye this day and I turn around and I give uh, Oleander a wink <laughs> Oh, fuck yeah. I'm going to stab this dude right in the head. <laughs> Clerics working together is such a beautiful thing. Uh, you don't even have to make an attack roll. Just roll damage. Well, auto crit, baby. Four. Two. Sneak attack. <laughs> didn't see it coming all right so you you stab him through. jeez man this poor guy he didn't even have that much health to begin with uh, you stab him through and he just falls falls quiet with his last breath i'm gonna cast spare the dying <laughs> we do it all over again until we get the answers we want no, okay. sure. I've got a special set of skills. <laughs> <laughs> Three clerics, more like the Spanish Inquisition with magic. Those guys were clerics too, I think. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> oh. uh, All right, cool. So that guy knows nothing. We killed, I mean, o Oleander killed everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> I technically only killed two people. Well, I killed none. Let's just all remember that fact. Wow, <laughs> you're you're really living up to the cleric of the god of peace, nature, <laughs> peace. Yeah, That's you're right. really doing it. L death, <laughs> the <laughs> low death, the wrestling god. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you guys search the house, and this will be uh, this will be our wrap up here. You guys search the rest of the house. And um, you find in you find just a bunch of random stuff, some bedding, some weapons, some food. But there's one very interesting thing. You open the door to this room and spy a table. And on the table is a metal cube. Uh, curious, you go over to it, you pick it up, and you notice uh, whoever picks it up 
you're just you're kind of astonished by the contents of the cube. On each of its sides is written a name. Uh, so on the first side, you see the name Whitmore. Uh, you turn it, and then you see the name Bray, and then you turn it, and you see the name Oleander. Uh, you turn it, there's Lord Neverember. Uh, turn it again, let's see, there's Soren. And then finally you turn it, and there's a name you haven't seen before, Leah, L-Y-A, on this cube. Damn, there we go. Riddle solved. <laughs> you said L Y A. L Y A. Oh yeah, that is that is your riddle. Yeah. Would you read it again for the for the crowd? There will be one name you don't recognize. She hides within the key to his undoing. She hides within. Within. At, within. Yep. Guys, I think there's a lady inside this cube. Hello. <laughs> uh, oh, the, <laughs> the, the cube does not speak back shit what if it was that the working lady the what oh the laney no it's laney not leah no 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 i got this coin from this lady that i took it from her room from her room what was that, Hooray's room? Yeah, it was Hooray's room. So the other person was cleaning it out, like emptying it out. Mm, okay. I didn't communicate that well. So um, I think we're done here. Yeah. So yeah, that is it. You guys uh, return back home and um, you don't, you have some kind of lead on the mom and her life. You have some kind of lead on this weird cult. And now you have a cube with five names that you know, the three of you, Whitmore, your orc friend, and Soren's close companion. Uh, Lord Never Ember and Leah, this new name. Uh, so I'm going to go over to Whitmore and show him the cube. And I'm going to say, I think it's time that we spoke to Lord Never Ember. He takes the cube from you and, mm, this is curious, hands it back. Uh, I agree. I'll, um, one of you should talk to Mural and he will, uh, he'll, he'll, He'll have a, a word with the king. Okay. Who's that? Carol is oh. the head of the uh, Winter Shield Watch. Yep. We spoke to him already. I give him the, uh, the old elf or what up. <laughs> yes. Vyanderil Sukari. Sukasa Mikasa. <laughs> uh, Elvin is Spanish. I forgot. <clears throat> Okay, and then yeah, you guys can do that conversation at the beginning of next session. Cool. Okay, anything else to uh, wrap up? Any questions? Or I'm trying to think. I think that is it as far as story wise from my end. Uh, yeah, can we uh, visit those wizards and see what favor they were going to give us? Oh, sure. Yeah, we'll do that at the beginning of next session. Just remind me. Okay. Yep. But yeah, you'll have to shoot me the uh, shield guardian or altered shield guardian stats. Cool. We'll do. Yep. That's going to be sick. Because <laughs> now, the, now the baby is actually just like a party member, pretty much. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. Not fully autonomous, though. He's still controlling the thing. Yeah, Soren's controlling. For, for but, now. For now, until yeah. the baby has his motor skills. And then we'll get him little levers. And, yeah. So can we <laughs> change thing. the name to three clerics and a full metal alchemist? <laughs> 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 so It'll good. really be like Snowball from Rick and Morty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the next NPC is a pickle, unfortunately, so get ready for that. Where is my, my mother, Summer? My Where is my mother? Yeah. <laughs> Where are my balls? <laughs> okay, cool. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in. This has yeah, been Three Clerics cool. and a Baby. Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. This is see you guys next week. Time, same place. Brought to you by Sheep Scrotum. <laughs> Pretty thin on the sponsors this time around. I know. What a.